Okay, so we'll probably wait another couple minutes if you guys can get ready if you want to draw alongside me. And I have a few examples of the birds that I've done in the past. But for the warm-ups, oh, you know what? I'm going to grab my, my crappy paper. <laughs> Kendra also said uh, she has a whole folder, say it, of birds. Oh, really? Of robin birds, yeah. Yeah. Kendra, are there, I'm guessing, do you have robins where you live right now? I would think there'd be robins in South Korea, right? Po possibly, I think. Because we, uh, I think like robins, we see so many robins here. Hmm. What are you looking for? My crappy sketchbook paper. You know what, though? I'm okay to use, oh, you know what? I bent this one, I think. Okay, I'll use this paper for the warm-ups. So like I said, for the warm-ups, if you want to draw alongside me, we'll be looking at random Pinterest birds. You don't have to be doing the ones I'm doing. And then after the 10 minutes, we'll start to do the, the bird that I referenced in the download below. It is a wren bird, as it's called. It's another one of these birds that I have to do for this beer company that I'm doing the labels for. And it's all these different birds. This one was my favorite. I'm pretty sure this is a Junko bird. They're just really, really round. <laughs> <laughs> He's cute. He's cute. And then this one, the sandpiper, it's remember the Pixar did that movie? The oh, Piper? Yeah, that's yeah. what this bird or that's what it's based off of that bird. A barn dowel. It's funny how I kind of learned more about each of the birds as I drew them. Oh, do I not have the raven in here? I do not have the raven. That was one of my most proud ones. Yeah. It's a lost in the shuffle. But yes, yeah, so we will be doing a bird similar to that, or a similar to this rendering style, I should say, or at least that's what I'm going for. If you have your own type of style, I want to start doing these follow-alongs where at the end, I'll show off your guys' creations. So if you could post in the Discord what you draw during the stream, I will show it live. I mean, obviously, preferably, I would want you to draw a bird. <laughs> but um, if you're just kind of free drawing, I guess that's okay. But I would really prefer if you draw a bird with me today so we can kind of talk about the struggles and how to do it. So, yeah. Any last-minute questions before we... <laughs> Simon says, be like Simon when you play League and Rage. Just kidding, grab a cup of tea <laughs> and play the best game ever. <laughs> right. I figured I'll play two or three live, and I'll just have fun with it. I'll play like, my three um, mains. it will be like Ziggs, Garen, and Mundo. That works. Yeah. Or do like an ARAM, just have a fun time. No, I I personally don't like ARAM in League of Legends, my least favorite game mode. <laughs> Fem says, so now we need to make a stream for the fish with all the people in chat streaming their faces. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I just hold the monitor really close so the fish can say hi to all of you. I mean, but honestly, that's how I would set up the stream. I'd probably put the computer pretty close and then as I'm you know putting the water in or putting the plants in and eventually we'll put Bubba in <laughs> eventually eventually he'll find his home what would Bubba's friend's name well, be well I want to get what? what would Bubba's friend's name be I don't know because do I get a girl fish assuming he's a straight fish and then <laughs> they can mate if possible like do I, I want little that baby work. is that how that works with fish I'm pretty sure. Oh, I mean, okay. I could do my research. I don't know. Um, yeah, no, I guess that is. Maybe. Because if well, I got a girl lionhead fish, I don't even know what I would name her. Unless if you guys have some ideas for a girl lionhead fish. It's very specific. Like but I, I want the boy to be Bubba. Bubba. I've always liked the name Bubba. <laughs> it would be like Bubba and Tubba. It would be something... Or no, maybe I don't want it to rhyme. We'll, we'll get there eventually. Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> Okay, so if you guys are ready, we'll start our 10-minute warm-ups. Okay, I'm going to move these out of the way. Kendra mm -hmm. says, yeah, I'm not sure. I've never seen robins here, only sparrows. I miss robin, red robins so much. Robins yeah, I know. I feel like robins, we see so many of them here. But oh, yeah. we don't see a lot of sparrows, I guess, so balance is out. <laughs> um, Hayden says, my favorite birds are cardinals. That's like... Isn't that one of your favorites? Yeah. yeah. You can see there's a little... Oh, it's being blocked. Oh, there's My little cardinal. It's a fat, chubby one. <laughs> <laughs> but my mom always says it reminds her of her grandma, and now when I see a cardinal, I think of my mom. And oddly enough, I saw a female cardinal this morning. They're not the red ones, but still, still same um, recognition I get. Okay. Is everyone ready? Oh, I forgot to put the timer on the screen this time. Oh, yeah. 
You know what? Actually, okay. I'll do this. Oh, that's right. I was going to give you the power of the computer. You know what? We're only doing one timer, though, so it's fine. Yeah. If you could just do the five, two, one. But if we do this again in the future with a, a life drawing type stream, we'll have the timer on the screen for you guys. But just know we are going to be doing 10 minutes of warm-ups. So if you're ready to draw with me, get out your pencils or your digital pens, whatever you're working with. And Josh, you give us the countdown. All right. And like you said, they can draw birds they find or anything they want, right? Yes. But so during these... birds for the warm-up if you want to. Yeah. Okay. So since we're going to be doing a render of a bird, I prefer if you guys do warm-ups of birds. <laughs> and when I'm saying the warm-ups, I don't mean try to detail and render out a bird. Look at the shapes and simplify it, because that's what we're going to be talking a lot when we're starting the Ren, is for birds, and I mean with most things that you're going to draw, especially with an isolated subject matter, you want to break it down and simplify it into the most basic shapes and then kind of build off of that. So even when I'm doing my warm-up sketches, you maybe... Uh, you can see how it's not going to look like a realistic portrayal of a bird, but it's going to capture the shapes, and that's what I'm going to be looking for here. All right. Can you set us off? The, oh, actually, you know, I'll start the timer, and I can talk then when it starts. All okay, right. I'm ready. Starting in five, four, three, two, one. Perfect. Move this over here. But definitely, I'm going to take Candor's. We could, should take Kander's advice about watching some of these things about um, taking care of fish. Because she says, remember, the fish need to climb it with the water first. There are some great channels on YouTube about all this. So you can be the happiest and healthiest fishy. Oh, yeah. No, I know you're supposed to uh, heat the water to a certain temperature and then put the bag that the fish comes in inside of the tank for 10, 20 minutes first, and then you let the fish out. <laughs> There's, like, a lot of <laughs> rules but it's obviously to protect the fish. Also, Kendra says Babsy as a girl fish name. <laughs> oh, Babs is pretty good. I mean, if I ever That's got cute. a pet bunny, I feel like I would name it Babs. Uh, Juliet says, this is not related to the bird drawing, but I'm working on a tunnel book, and I was thinking about how cool a drawing from you would look as a tunnel book. I never thought about it. What's a tunnel book? Yeah, I, I actually don't know what a tunnel book is. I don't know what a tunnel book is. Could you do a quick Google on that? A tunnel book. Mesh my Tunnel books are made up of a series of pages that are held together by folded strips of paper on each side. In fact, the sides of a tunnel book may, may make you think of an accordion. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what Danny Diaz did for his Inktober a couple years ago. Yeah, I like that look. Those yeah. are so cool. Those are fun. <laughs> Okay, really quick, I'm just going to point out that this is as far as I'm going to get in the detail with these warm-ups. So we literally, I'm looking at blocking out the shapes, and then once I feel I got a good shape, I'm going to move on to the next. Because I know I can render in detail things pretty consistently on whatever I'm drawing, but where I get caught up is if the, the line art, the initial proportioning of the subject matter is off, and it will throw off all my rendering because... As I talked about in the last stream, I can polish something and it can look really pretty, but as my teacher used to say, if you polish and shine up a turd, at the end of the day, it's just a shiny <laughs> turd. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you have a good start and proportion with whatever you're doing before you get into the rendering phase. All right, we have two minutes, 30 seconds. Left? Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, it was five minutes, right? No, 10. Oh my God. All right, we're at... Oh. <laughs> You guys are fine. I was going to say, there is no I'll give you the way. Five, I thought it was five minute warm up today. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everyone's fine. I'll give you the five minute warning soon. <laughs> it's like, schwa. There's no way. I mean, I know time seems getting faster for me, but there is no way. <laughs> There's no way. So usually when you're doing the initial shapes, the, I guess the classically, what that'd be called, the academic way of learning how to draw would be to draw the overall shapes really light, and then you cut in the secondary forms, and that's how you start seeing, uh, the, sh I guess, those little cuts and details of the outline. But you want a really good first outer shape like this. Oh, I'm going to do the one with the mohawk. 
Now, obviously, you don't have to feel strained uh, when you're looking. Just find any that kind of catches your eye and run with it. <laughs> Fem's time, Fem says time flies when you're having fun, but not that <laughs> fast. <laughs> Simon says I refuse to play Arams. It's evil. You want to see Simon get frustrated at League? Put me in an Arams. <laughs> I'm curious now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan. The one way to break not Simon. Throw him in an Aram. I mean, I, I can totally understand why people like it. I think my competitive play style just does not find enjoyment from it. Um, tell me when we hit the five minute mark, because then I might do a little bit more of a render on the last one. Okay, we are hitting the five minute left mark. All right, so hopefully, if you guys are doing the birds alongside me, uh, you can see I'm trying to do about a minute a bird or a bird a minute and I think for the last five minutes I'm gonna go a little further on one of them <laughs> hey Juliet says I was picturing picturing you're running with the hairs drawing as a tunnel book because it has so many layers and a lot of depth That'd be really cute. oh but how would it I mean, I guess if it continued, like the rabbits continued running and I made it a longer piece, then I could see that. Yeah, now I know what you kind of mean. Oh, Babs is here. Babs? Babs, hello. Oh, hello, Babs Web. I still need to officially meet Babs in person. I feel like I've heard so many things about you that I feel like I know you. <laughs> Babs is a legend. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I interviewed Babs last Friday, and you can watch the whole interview on YouTube right now. She's another graphite artist, and she works pretty heavily with graphite, uh, powdered graphite now. So if that piques your interest, you can go check that out right now and check out her page. <laughs> she says you're a master, Timothy. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Babs. Okay, let's find one that I'll render out a little more. Now, obviously, there are a lot of bird image, images with the wings spread open. That would be a little bit more of a study because then we'd have to talk about bird anatomy a little, just a little bit. Where today's stream, because the wren that we're drawing has the, the wings closed, I want to focus too much on that. I want to have a more simplified drawing. But eventually, I could do a stream talking about wings in general, not specifically just for birds. Because I know a lot of you guys might want to draw like angels or anything that has wings incorporated in the drawing. And I feel like there's a structural underlying that you should know first before you just dive into doing uh, wings. Because they can be kind of difficult. Uh, three minutes, by the way. All right. Then I think this is the bird I'll spend a little more time on. And the thing that I always get flustered with doing warm-ups is picking up my pencil and having more gestural lines because my mind is so conditioned to render things that I forget during the warm-up stage to kind of let uh, go of that structural thinking. Because even with like this head on this bird, it's very tight. It doesn't fit the proportions because I didn't first look at the overall shape, which is what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And I know that this is the way you're supposed to do it, but I, I just forget. And then I, when I remember, I'll look back at my drawing and think, oh, yeah, there, there's some proportions that are off here. So try your best during the warm-up not to skip the more gestural shape-finding actions. Birds have such strange shapes. Mm-hmm. 
They're like potatoes <laughs> with feathers. They're so darn cute. Oh, Drea, hello. Hey, Drea. Just got off work. Are you done for the weekend then? It's exciting. All right, let me check our timer. You're good still. So we're we um, about to hit the minute mark here. All right, then I'm going to do a quick kind of uh, value layout of this bird. Candor says, I usually have no idea what I'm doing on drawing wings, but people seem to enjoy the way I draw them. <laughs> I just always love to learn about wings because of my bird reincarnation original characters. Aw. Exactly. I think it's one of those things where they're so pretty to look at in a final drawing, but when you see someone trying to draw wings and they just look off, it's, it's admittedly the only thing I can look at when I'm looking at the image then. So I think having a good tutorial just on drawing wings would be nice. All right, we're hitting 10 seconds left. Ah. Do you want to ring the bell at the zero? Oh, gosh, yes, of course I do. <laughs> Five, How powerful bell. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> Time shot. That is our beautiful bell noise for her. Whenever anyone becomes a member here, we will ring the bell for you guys. <laughs> and also, there is the bell emoji. Okay. Let me move this out of the way. So these are my quick little warm-up bird studies. As you can see, like I said, nothing too defined or detailed. I'm not going for a finished result, except for the last one I tried to put a little more effort so you can see how you start to cut into the shapes that you created. But what's most important is creating the shapes first. So if you guys want to post your little warm-ups on the Discord so that Josh can start pulling them, and that's if you're drawing with me today. I know this is a very oddly specific uh, study, which isn't everyone's forte, but I feel like if we start doing more and more of these, I, I think it's good to broaden your range of what you typically would draw. And maybe for some of you, you would never draw a bird before. So I'm hoping this stream kind of pushes you out of that comfort zone and maybe draw a bird. <laughs> okay. So I'll wait like a minute before we start this wren bird. If any of you... Uh, want to draw alongside with me doing a more detailed bird, now's your chance to download it, and then I'm going to jump into it. But I'm going to do my best to explain the process while I'm drawing and hopefully minimize any questions that you might guys might have alongside of it. But if there's anything that you feel I missed or uh, if I went too fast on something, just let us know and we'll do our best to uh, slow it down for you guys. I'm going to grab my tea though. Do you want me to airdrop them to you? How do I do that? Or do you want me to just... You didn't... Uh, just let me know, because I have Wi-Fi turned off. Oh, okay. I can wired. airdrop, yeah. Mm -hmm. Although you could... I'm going to see. Could you pull it up in this screen, maybe? The Oh, Discord? Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. We'll use mm. this antique there. Beautiful. Oh. Usually it'll just do it if I type in... There we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, Kandor, those are great. Uh, Drea and Fem are just raising my bell freaking confidence ringing. <laughs> bell ringing confidence. They've raised it. Do not even know that was a thing. <laughs> Doing that with such elegance is what Fem says. And Drea says, how can I make a clunky bell sound adorable? <laughs> it's all about those little hits when you do it. Just... <laughs> those little hits. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and start our Ren bird. And oh, Unic posted too. Oh, Candor. Those are great. <laughs> yeah, Candor, I can tell you draw birds, or at least you have an interest in them because of the way that you did the head shape. There's all these slight inner cuts, and that's what I'm talking about the secondary uh, forms that you're finding. I love the flying, the bird in motion one, too, right there. On the and top's the. And the unit. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I love that beak. <laughs> yeah, you got some strong bird warm ups <laughs> there. Okay, so are we ready? 
So if you have the run bird open, I'm going to put it on the screen here so you can see what I'm drawing. I'm going to be focusing on the shapes first. So I'm going to try to go a little slower than I normally do when I'm drawing this bird because normally a bird like this should take me about an hour, hour and a half. So we'll see where our time is, but I'm going to try to not go too fast and miss something that might be important for you guys. You know what? I'm going to zoom in even. A bit like a uh, little up. There we go. Okay, so here we go. So first things first, I'm going to find the shape of the bird. Now the shape of this bird is pretty interesting because it's basically a small russet potato. Kind of like a, a sack <laughs> with a triangle sticking out in three places. So we got the back tail, which goes well above the head. You know what? That head should be lower there. Oh, Simon, goodbye. Thank you for stopping. Bye, Simon. Enjoy your lunch. Uh, we'll have to get Legan soon. I've just been, my free time's all Animal Crossing right now, <laughs> um, which is kind of a problem, so. <laughs> so the second triangle is near the butt here butt of the bird. Get a nice shape of that wing. Now, if you do need to do a lot of gesture strokes here, that's totally fine because uh, I should have mentioned I'm working with a 2H, so I'm working with a really light pencil so that if I need to erase or go over any lines, it's really easy to do that with this lighter pencil. And then the third triangle is from the beak pushing out the front. Now I'm looking at this, I can already tell it's too low. So I try to look spatially how much space is in between like the top of the head and where the beak begins. Like that. A little notion to where that eye might be. Work my day way around the belly. This little puff of a bird. That. Okay, so you can see we got the general shape. I'm not locking anything in yet because I still want to do a quick leg placement. Now, obviously, I'm not going to draw every part of this foot yet, but I can tell the foot doesn't quite reach the front of the belly, and it starts somewhere in the middle, slightly behind the middle of the bird. So that's why, that's why I made the lines light so I could erase. The leg is, starts a little behind the middle of the bird, so around here. Their legs don't even look like they're attached to the body. They're just oh, I so know. Tiny. Whenever I draw a bird, it, I always want to do the human thing where it gets a little wider near where it meets the bit body, where the <laughs> legs meet the body, but nope, nope. they're just kind of these thin little sticks. There we are. And then for the rock formation, I'm not going to go too far down, but I do want to show a little bit of the rocks or whatever, what, what is this, a log? Whatever it is that it is standing on here, I want to draw a little bit of that. And it's a good little texture study. So then we can talk about that. Oops, move it up for you guys. Back, there we go. Okay, now for the foot, I'm going to give some general shapes here. I'm not going to try to detail it too much. But I do want to showcase a little bit of where they go. Now, if you look at the reference, the foot doesn't stop 
or the leg itself doesn't stop where the body begins. It is pushed in a little bit on the body. So I'm going to raise it up as I swing a little puff under him around. Like that. Okay, now let me do a double check. Sometimes this is the stage where I really should be doing the most double checking because if there is a proportion that feels really off, if I don't fix it now, it'll show itself when I'm into the rendering and then I'm not being effective or efficient uh, with my time. Which as an artist, sometimes that can be the worst trait to have is not being efficient. Because then you might be stuck on a drawing for weeks when it only should have taken you a couple days. And then something like this should only take an hour or two or maybe three hours depending on how difficult the wings are. But if you keep messing up their proportions, having to go back and redo them, then that's where this could take a lot longer. Okay, let me get another sip of tea really quick. <laughs> Kendra's using a color race pencil. Hmm. That's what Sean primarily uses. He he really likes them. I know definitely more than a uh, what were the remember when you were a kid and you got in or I don't know if you ever did this, but I got them all the time. Uh, you could get a pack of art supplies. It wasn't Crayola. Uh, Rose art is that it? I always just got Crayola. Oh well, thank you, Kema Gonzalez, for subscribing. It would be it would be like a pack of like every it would have like markers, crayons, uh, pastels, pencils, but they were really crappy. Uh, so yeah, the cool erase or the yeah those pencils and what are the Prisma Color? Those are the two that I would recommend if you're going to work uh, with, especially with colored pencils. Okay, so moving on. Uh, so now this is where we're going to start cutting into the secondary shapes. I started to do it a little bit, which I shouldn't have, uh, but I can't help myself sometimes. I just want to render so bad all the time. So in this case, we're going to start breaking it down into the secondary forms. And uh, if you guys are ready, I'll start doing that. Or if, uh, you have, if you ever feel, if you are following along and you feel that I'm moving too fast, just let us know. I can definitely slow it down. But if we're good to go, I'm just going to keep going. So now when I'm looking at the reference of the bird, you can see how we have some color coding uh, to it. There are a lot of white spots, which are really nice for a graphite artist because then I know those will keep lighter. But where it's darker, I probably want darker values. Now, sometimes when I do a reference study, I like to have it in color, but then I like to also have it in grayscale form so I can just see how the values look in pure grayscale. But sometimes I don't want to reference it too much because I like to play with a more fantastical rendering. And you can see that with my other birds. Sometimes I push edges, so like on him, I specifically had, I wanted a hard edge on every bird so it reads really nice on the label. So I pushed a really hard line here even though that, that, that doesn't exist because the belly was white. So sometimes I'll push values to help contrast or to help separate the form from the background. So you can kind of see this is the look that we'll be going for. And you know, I could even have it, that's where I can see it. There we go. So I'm going to start doing that here. So when I'm going through, I do a light value pass. So this isn't locking anything in down. I'm not creating any more line art. But, oh no, sorry. First I'm going to be locking the secondary forms. And I don't know, you know what? No, I'm going to do the values first. Because if you do it light enough, these can change and edit as well. But once you start cutting into the secondary forms, I feel like that's when you're starting to enter more into a detailing phase. So let's go ahead and start doing a light value pass here. So I know for sure the head is going to be a little darker above the eye. And also when I'm starting to shade and render, I'm trying to push the strokes in the direction of the feathers themselves. That way if any of the texture or any of your pencil strokes are seen, it'll just look like it's part of the texture of the bird. Wait, and Josh, interrupt me at any time. Oh, like, yeah. I could just keep. <laughs> well, I know, I, yeah, I know you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 
Ava says, how do you keep your line work clean to reduce the amount of smudges or marks in the clean parts of your paper? I've always struggled with little fingerprints <clears throat> scattering my paper. So depending on how I'm working, um, sometimes, what? Oh, well, thank you, Belly Mouth, belly for becoming mouth. a member. You get the power. <laughs> Congratulations, you get the bell. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, well, yeah, thank you so much. Now I get to use the emojis. So when I'm working, I try not to have my hand cover what I'm drawing too much. Was there a slight delay? I found out how to fix my slight delay, so I won't have a third hand anymore. Are you ready for this? So I just say reconnect to device. Oh. Yeah, so I won't have a third, third arm anymore. Arm <laughs> Sometimes the stream will delay what I'm drawing. <laughs> and if it's like 20 seconds delayed, I'll be talking with my hands, but it'll still look like there's a hand drawing <laughs> down here. So I hopefully know how to fix that now. That's good to know, though, because, yeah, that was happening a lot for you. Mm -hmm. But to help prevent smudging, I try not to have my hand overlay. But the 2H pencil, like, I could, you could do that, and it won't smudge that bad at all. It's when you start using an HB and darker, that's when you're going to start smudging it, especially if you were working with a 2B and higher, that's going to smudge regardless. So some artists will put either a piece of paper down, they'll put a tissue down, they'll wear a, a glove, screen protector glove, whatever you find works for you. But my advice is kind of the most obvious one is to just not place your hand wherever you have a, hard gra or a lot of dark graphite. And for me, since I know there are going to be areas that I do want to get darker, but I'm going to save that till the very end of the drawing. Otherwise, I'm going to be avoiding and I'm going to be trying to work around it the entire time. So rather than have to even play that game, I would rather save it till the end and uh, not have to worry so much about my hand position. Eric's... Eric Ziva says, long time since I've done anything even resembling a study. Oh, well, I hope you're <laughs> joining in today and helping out. Your, what would that be called? Your, oh my gosh. Your, um, I don't know where you're going with this one, honestly. Not like, um, or it's kind of like your library of reference. You're putting in, Basically, whenever I draw something that I'm not familiar drawing with, I pick up little notes on how to draw that specific subject matter, and that usually helps lean itself when I draw into other things. So when I drew a deer, and I learned how the antlers look and how they form out of the head, when I started drawing horns on my characters, or if I did a, like a fantasy-type character with deer-type horns, I knew the direction that they would grow in. And it's, just, it's all about broadening what your knowledge base on drawing things that are rooted in reality are. So whenever you draw a bird, hopefully you can pick up some of that knowledge and then apply it to other things. So like this foot on this bird is really interesting. So if I were to draw a, a large character, especially during my Drawtober study or my Drawtober drawings, if I wanted a big uh, bird claw, and if I wanted to be not even on a bird, but it could be a character that you know is humanoid but has bird features, I would know how to draw that because I do, did reference studies of a real bird. And you can pull from that all the time. And that's why they say do a lot of life uh, drawing studies. Specifically, if you're going to be doing a lot of characters, go to human life drawing sessions because you're going to learn so much from those sessions and then they can be directly applied to your character art. I know there's probably a better way I could have said that, but eventually I found what I meant. <laughs> But I know there's a specific word I'm looking for that I, I can't think of. This isn't happening to us a lot lately. Yeah. <laughs> We've been trying to find specific words for things. It just doesn't exist. Right. Um, what was our um, one during the one stream? Conglomerate. Conglomerate. Oh, conglomerating. Yeah, conglomerating. <laughs> I still think that's a gross word. <laughs> conglomerating. Conglomerating. Just even saying it sounds, ugh, not my favorite. Yeah, Dylan gave some good advice for smudging, too. Also suggests making sure to wash your hands before drawing because oils on your hands can also cause those smudges. Very important. I mean, you can ask Josh, every time before a stream, I always wash my hands. Usually it's to wipe off some of the makeup that I put on my face because I get so red when I stream. <laughs> but it's very true. If you have very oily fingers, even when I'm just drawing, sometimes every hour and a half, two hours, I'll get up and wash my hands because if my hands get oily... 
when your hand is resting on here, it'll smudge into the paper. And if charcoal mixes with your oil, it's going to be Ooh. cemented in your paper. It'll be impossible to lift up with an eraser. So that is really good advice. You really swung that tea there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> I'm just like, uh. Tim's like so whatever about like his drawings. He'll like just mess with them so in front of me. And I'm like, Tim, how can you do that? <laughs> Makes me all. I'm the one sweating. My hands are all oily right now because I'm sweaty. I'm I, so I do weird. have I do have somewhat of a distance between my relationship between me and my drawings. I never feel I get too attached to any of them. I think maybe because I know I could redraw it if I needed to, but I think it's a practice that I got from high school, where, and this is this is a very weird thing, but I know this goes back to the practice by the monks that do the sand laying and then they blow it away. So we had a um, an assignment where we had to draw something and we had a week to work on it. And then at the end of that week, we would show it to the class and then literally we all had to throw it away. We all had to rip it up and then throw away the drawing that we did. And it was supposed to be a challenge on not becoming too attached to your work. And I think, I don't know if that like broke my whole idea of what attachment meant to art, but I've, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel very comfortable like putting tea okay, or but yeah you shouldn't do that though like that's just deliberate <laughs> i mean i never purposely ruined my art actually though you want to hear a funny story with <laughs> this kind of stuff so you haven't met or you met cory godby right but you haven't met justin gerard right yeah okay so, i was close to me meeting justin but it was just so busy at c2e2 yeah yeah so they have a ritual in which apparently they inherited this from someone else as well but for art that doesn't sell well, and if they have it through the routine of trying to sell the original for a couple of years, every year they'll lower the price. And then eventually, once a year, they collect all the art that they didn't sell and they feel like it was more of their weak, weaker pieces. They'll literally burn all of them. They'll, they'll just sit and they'll burn all of the art that didn't do well. And they say it's your strengthening your overall, oh, what do they call it? I'm going to have such a loss of words today. But you know how you have, like, portfolio? Yeah. Well, imagine if your portfolio got, like, an average based on how good they were. Let's say your average then was a 6 or 7 based on everything. But if you delete the lower half, your average then becomes a 7 or 8 as, like, an overall portfolio. So they say you're you're trimming the fat of your work and you're actually strengthening your portfolio. <laughs> I'm sure there's, like, two very different viewpoints on that. <laughs> Because I'm sure there, I'm sure a lot of people are like, why would anyone burn their work? Everything you make, I guess though, if that's how they feel like they function and get better with what they're doing, then well, and why I like them so much is because they still believe in magic, not in like the very you know like sorcerer, well, kind of, but they believe that uh, internally, then your sense of what you can create becomes grander because you let off the load of your weaker work. So then you can move forward without the pressure of um, making your old look work better. Instead, just make new work that's even better. Is there something that, what's something that you'd burn? There, if I had a look at the originals box that we bring to cons, yeah. I bet I could easily grab five. That I'd be like, yeah. Burn it? Burn it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> One of should... being the original he did of me. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be a first burn. First burn. Without a thought. <laughs> That's what you used to actually start the fire. Is that one? <laughs> you light that one up and throw it into the other. That's just the Kindle. Kindle. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh or no, sorry. So, um, wait, hang on. I. <laughs> I saw one of Kandor's comments while I was doing that. Kandor says, don't you dare burn the flower boy. I finally have money to buy him. Ah! <laughs> no, flower boy I like. I think any of the YouTube drawings I would keep just because then people would be like, oh yeah, not only do I have the original, but you can watch the creation of it on YouTube. We're going to fly back for a second, though. Fly back. Fly back. Y'all are getting to me right now with these dad jokes. What? Oh no, let me hear some. Well, I'm I saying fly back because it's a bird and we're flying back. I Yeah. Do we want the third arm fixed, is what Tom asks. Oh, I guess <laughs> I there is a little bit of a delay now. I think only when it's 20 seconds or more will I fix it. Yeah. The when it's this low. Though. I mean... Talk about magic. You come in this stream, like, don't even know this guy. 
and you see him like doing this and then that's going on people would think i mean something's up i mean speaking of magic not to stroke your ego right now but i feel like you've also introduced the idea of magic being real but not in like the imaginary way that a lot of us think of magic oh well, thank you eva garcia oh gosh we need one more and then we got a league of legends three. Oh gosh <laughs> but thank you thank you so if you don't Want to see League of Legends? Please stop Just the subscriptions. Unfollow. Unsubscribe. Unfollow <laughs> I wish the counter went backwards. <laughs> but you, actually it was you and then Beatrice Blue's book. And then kind of talking to other artists that still introduce magic in their life. But uh, Sam Gay was another one I met at the workshop that talks about magic. And basically it's you decide what magic means to you. So, uh, man, there are so many stories I can go off of this. But you brought magic in because the way that you set up the lights and you bought colored lights specifically for Christmas. And I never buy colored lights. I'm always one of those. We should have white lights only. <laughs> and you brought color. And in the kitchen, I remember walking in and it was just, it looked beautiful. It looked like fireflies, but of different colors just as I walked in the kitchen. So even though I knew they weren't fireflies, the feeling that I got looking at them was magical. And I, I started to think about how we can make more magical moments in our life. Even with this room, I really like the color yellow. I like having the sun pour in. And those little moments create magic because then they give you that feeling. It doesn't have to be uh, a wizard casting a wand. Sometimes magic can be more personal and intimate to how you associate the word with magic. So Honestly, we could all just say living is magic. I mean, come on now. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. Thank you. Well, I yeah. try. And then, I bring a little magic into the world. Oh, you definitely do. I think you were, you're real reminding me of how beautiful the world is mm. just from little things because I, I think I'm so head down work all the time I think to me that was my that was my life but I think taking breaks and then like even when we started the garden last year to me that garden the little farm we had that was magical and that's why I'm so excited to do it again with you this year well you, ins you inspire magic in people too no I just trick people <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but yeah, I think the Beatrice Blue Book was fun for you because that's what kind of what made you mm -hmm. do this room colored even too. Actually, you could you? Colors. It's in that closet on the left side, top shelf. Oh, yeah. Could you grab it really quick? Because I've never met Beatrice. I've talked to her and uh, Danny Diaz on Instagram, but uh, I think they're amazing. The way they talk about life, and it's not even just with art. They talk about even living their day to day in such a magical context and uh, I think about that now with people not only that are artists but even people like Josh on how everyone can be a source of magic if you see it that way and I know I'm kind of getting way off topic for what I'm supposed to be drawing right now so this is a bird <laughs> <laughs> so yeah we're drawing birds today so this is her book wonder uh, it is truly uh amazing i i love this book as you can see i even got the color palettes from a page in her book because i wanted the back room and that's where this color came from in my room <laughs> but the way that she talks about uh treasures in your life and i promise this isn't like a paid advertisement for beatrice <laughs> i just re i really like the book and it touched me uh, she talks about how the basically you can create your own glass house the empty glass house. And then you fill it with things that you consider personal treasures. And that doesn't have to be physical things. They could be memories. It could be sounds, uh, food, the taste of foods that you really like. But you get to fill up this imaginary greenhouse with the, these things that you consider treasures. And then she talks about how, uh, what those treasures are to her. And her greenhouse becomes filled with them. So then as you're kind of going through the book, the whole premise is to fill up your your greenhouse, your glass house with everything that you find to be beautiful and magical in the world. And whenever you need to escape from reality, if you're having a bad day, you can always enter this glass house and you can be surrounded with the things you love. It's just, to me, such a beautiful concept. And then Danny Diaz did a little um, intro to the book. And basically he talks about how and this is actually a really good way to be inspired to draw something. Actually, I'll put it over. I like having this book. Yeah, down. I think that's good to keep out. Uh, where basically, imagine putting a little door on anything, literally anything. It could be this microphone that we're using. It could be the bell that is super annoying. You put a little door on it, and imagine if you got the little key to whatever you put the door on. Imagine what type of world would be inside of that object you just put a door on. 
And I love that way of thinking because then even the mundane, even the ordinary become extraordinary. And that's something that I tend to forget a lot. Uh, and I, I tend to only look for things that are super like obviously inspiring. Like when I, when we went to the, the thrift convention, I looked for the most gaudy, extravagant things. But sometimes if I take a closer look, like the spoon that I found, that grapefruit spoon, that was gorgeous. <laughs> but it was it was really small and it had um, magic all its own that isn't as obvious or glamorous. So I like the idea of that anything can become a cool story, but it's you and the way you look at it that has to change, not the object. Anyways, I'll get back to drawing the bird. <laughs> I'm sure there's some people being like, Tim, can you just stop talking in the comments? Oh my goodness, no one would think that. Josh is like, I actually think that. I'm like, all right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next topic, please. No, uh, no it's like, real, though. <laughs> I think I just I try on. to see, like, everyone in the world as a main character, in a sense. Like, I see everyone as important, and it makes everyone... Mm -hmm. I, I guess I do have more of a magical, like, view of the world, though, too. You do have so a you, very You kind of just view. see everyone as, like, in a sense, important or magical, and they have their own their own story. I don't know. I think everyone... We're all trying to tell our own stories. Story. So I can see the comments. Uh, there we go. We're all trying to tell our own stories, and I feel like sometimes what happens is we're trying to tell ours so much that we forget to listen to other people. So, that is a great way to say it. Um, uh, oh, Candor, but my bestie called me a whimsical person, and I was so flattered because it is one of my favorite words to explain something elegant and magical. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good word. That is actually I like whimsical. That's like, actually how I think I would view you too. I think especially, too, because we get to know each other through the internet, so it's not like I'm talking or seeing you that lately. But I would just, from the little bit I've got to know you through just chatting, I just see you as very... You don't complain. I know you work a lot. <laughs> you stay up very late to watch these streams. So, like, I feel like you're probably tired a lot and a little wore down, but you're always just, like, good. <laughs> yeah. You have such a good presence about you. Honestly, those are... <laughs> And I'm not, once again, struck a year ago, but you've reminded me that the best people to surround yourself with aren't necessarily the ones that are like the best in the field that you're currently working on. Sometimes just being around good natured, energetic people and just honestly loving people. If you surround yourself with a good group of well-minded people who are caring and have your best interests at heart, they will help you succeed in what your actual career is because then you are so motivated, typically, I mean, sometimes if you surround yourself with too many people that are happy but also don't want to do anything, sometimes that can drag you down. But I feel like you, with you, I've learned, okay, you can enjoy the work life and have a lot of friends and things that are set in that. But then in your real life, your, you know, your day to day, you want to surround yourself with people that are, are good. And not only you, but I think my best friend Kat is a good example of that. Sean's a good example of that. A lot of my family. So mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Fem, you just seem like one of those people. And it's like what Josh was saying. Like We haven't met you personally. But oh, that's yeah. the impression you always give off. So keep giving off that good energy because people do resonate with that and they do feel it. I'm not someone that would totally be like, oh, yeah, energies definitely exist and you can definitely feel. But I don't know. I kind of feel it. Mm -hmm. When you enter a room and someone's just giving you a good vibe energy, like our friend Joy, you just you want to be around that energy. You want to just hear what they will have to say. Anyways, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna focus a little bit more here. Josh, I'll let you kind of take the rein. Oh, okay. I do want to... Um, <clears throat> let me get caught up in some of these comments though, because I know we. <laughs> All right, so talking about burning some of your print or some of the originals. <laughs> <laughs> um, you. Uh, Eunice says, "God, I find that terrible to throw away your work. I tend to connect a lot of memories and even stupid sketches, so like." Keep basically everything. Yeah, I think that's what I was saying earlier, too. I think there's probably two separate people that... Because I feel like some people do really get connected to their work. Mm -hmm. um, so the act of burning it would feel very, like, almost losing a part of something that was you. <laughs> yep, the idea or, of burning something, like, physically hurts you. <laughs> Obviously, don't do it. <laughs> um, Fem says, if you ever want to burn the fat of your portfolio, I will happily collect it. <laughs> you know what? Maybe I could do some giveaways. That's not a bad idea. Like there are definitely some drawings I just that are that are lower priced that people have just been passing up over the years in our original box. That'd be cool to do like a stream. Mm -hmm. You know what? When we hit over forty thousand on YouTube, I think I'm at like thirty nine point seven. So maybe in a couple weeks, if I pass forty thousand followers, we could have like a giveaway stream where I, 
I find maybe a couple originals that have not and probably will not sell. I'll give them away, and I'll do one on the stream. Oh, that'd be a good idea. That'd be fun, right? Like a right. 40K stream. You get original. You get an original. <laughs> you get an original. <laughs> and I, I point to Bubba. <laughs> you get an original. Bubba just stares at the glass. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. The more that I think about Bubba, the more I'm like, this is perfect. <laughs> we got to just make sure Bubba, Astrid stays away from Bubba. What's Astrid going to do? Bubba's going to be all... Bubba? <laughs> you think Astrid's going to dive into a fish tank? Oh, no, Her the fish tank will have a shop. Okay, so we'll make sure... Yeah. Okay. I mean, cats can be smart, though. If, if Astrid killed it. Bubba, I would forgive her eventually, but I'd be upset. <laughs> oh, my gosh. No, I'm protecting <laughs> Bubba. There's no way I'm going to let Astrid get Bubba. Okay, really quick, for those of you who are following along, you can see how he has stripes going down the wings. I want to follow that pattern. You can see how it has a little bit of a point. So we're going to try to follow that a little bit here. I need to drink tea. Too, clearly I'm talking Deep too breaths. much. Deep breaths. <laughs> Alright, it's all you, Schwa. Oh. Thumb says, if, we're still working through these comments about the burning. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I you catch up. I'll probably let it go, but still want to get rid of stuff. You can always take a picture and keep the memories attached to it, but get rid of the paper. Yeah. Because even you, because oh, you yeah. have pictures of all of them, right? I take a scan of just everything. Like, Oh, I guess, yes. This is something that maybe a lot of you guys that do traditional art should hear. Whenever I finish anything, I always scan it right away and I make a digital copy, not only for my sketchbooks that I release, but then I have a reassurance of knowing I have it just in case the house burns down or something horrible happens and I lose my originals. At least you have a digital copy. Because if you lose the physical and the digital, I mean, that's horrible. And to be honest, I had a sketchbook a couple years ago that got stolen at a convention. It was kind of my own fault. I left my backpack outside of a car. Anyways, uh, it was stolen. And I had a few sketches in that sketchbook that I didn't scan. Oh, and that's such a Tim thing. It is such a Tim thing. <laughs> it had my 3DS in there. Oh, it, it was it was horrible. Mm -hmm. It was like I, I it was right after Spectrum. And I, I bought a bunch of books from artists that I admire. So I lost all those books, my sketchbook, my drawing tools, and my 3DS, and about $200 in cash. So not that the cash was important, but, you know, still still hit me as a 22-year-old or whatever I went. Uh, so, yeah, I learned to always scan everything, and I'm hoping that my mistake will hopefully remedy any of your guys' future mistake. So always scan whatever you do. And if you don't have a good scanner... Uh, if you go to school, usually your schools will have good scanners. Or if you are willing to purchase one, I have a Epson 10,000 scanner, and that's a museum quality scanner. It can get up to 10,000 DPI. You only need really up to 600, but uh, it works great, and you don't get the overexposed look on your drawings when you scan them. So, just some advice. When it comes to Tim and I, I feel like Tim is definitely more responsible than I am with a lot of things. But when it comes to just like <laughs> leaving things or losing things, it happens like daily. There's something mm -hmm. that he, I usually help him find. Or even like the other day at the store, just walks away from the cart with his like wallet, phone, <laughs> everything just sitting in the cart. And I'm like, Tim? <laughs> I can't even defend myself from that because it's, it's true. <laughs> I mean, most things you really, I mean, money management, just being a little bit more responsible with things. Definitely you're, you're better at that than I am, but... Like physical belongings I'm horrible with. Yeah. I can, I can admit that. I do have to work on getting better with that. Because that's not good. I shouldn't be leaving my wallet in a cart as I just meander through the store. I mean, granted, yeah. Someone I don't think should just take it, but, you know. You know also, why? We have to... You know why, though? I grew up in Wisconsin. There's this weird, naive trust we have for people. And yeah, I... You... But I, when I when I went to Illinois for school, I learned, oh my God, Wisconsin people are totally different in their mindset than Illinois people. I've never locked the door to my car or my house. But then when I went to Illinois, uh, I don't even know if I should be saying this, but basically my car was broken into the third week that I was there. <laughs> oh yeah, that's normal. I was when, like, I, when I lived in Albuquerque and then on the east side of Milwaukee, my house or my car got broken into like at least once a week. Yeah, I mean, because if I just forgot to lock it or something, instant, someone got in. Um, and I'm and not saying that. Where was, are you go. I just had to be really cautious with everything. I think that's where I got it from, because now that I'm, like, living in 
um, a safer part of town right now where usually mm -hmm. like stuff like that doesn't happen as often. Yeah, it's like, oh, I don't technically have to worry about that, but you still have that little bit of fear. It's funny because I didn't realize how naive I was until I moved out of state. And then I realized how many people mm -hmm. view Wisconsiners as kind of <laughs> slower. <laughs> but it's funny because I actually love Wisconsin people and I do accept that I am naive in a lot of ways of trusting people. I think I'm overly trusting. And even talking to Simon, we talked about how in uh, Canada, it's the same type of idealistic uh, kind of everyone is nice or everyone trusts each other to a certain degree. And I'm not saying that everyone should, especially if we live in a big city. I mean, I learned my lesson, <laughs> you know, definitely lock your doors and your cars. I think that's all I have to say on the matter. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> quickly hang on. Yeah, do a quick. Let me just I'm get sorry. through. Yeah, I just want to catch up because it's literally making me you a little nervous what? right now, guys. Zip. I'm sorry. Key is yeah. He's gone. Thank you. <laughs> Girl, I'll give it to you. There you go. Thank you. All right. Hopefully, if people can hear birds outside too. I think I saw Candor say something about that. See, that's how far behind I am. Let me just. Oh right, yeah, catch up, catch, catch up. up. Okay. Oh, Candor says, "Oh, I agree with Tim though. You're such a beautiful moon." You bring light in our nights, and that's why we love you. Oh, oh Kandor, thank you. That's a really good I've definitely been lighting up the nights with my 24-hour Animal Crossing screen glare. <laughs> 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 um, hang on, I'm double-checking names, too, to make sure. Okay, our text says, By the way, do you like anime? If yes, then did you watch Kimitsu where is no it? Yabda? You are better at... Wait, where is it? Right there. Oh, Kimetsu no Yaiba? Uh, no. Never heard of it. I mean, we do anime nights once a week. Well, it's postponed because of quarantine. But yeah, we try to watch four different anime episodes every week of a different anime. And Josh is really liking How to Keep a Mummy. Mm -hmm. oh and my gosh, uh, I've been showing right. Josh uh, Mushishi, which is one of my top favorite animes. And then what, what did Zach pick last week? Or the... um, oh gosh, JoJo's. Oh, JoJo's. I think we talked about that last week. Yeah, JoJo's is not for me. Not for Josh. I think it's pretty funny. Not for Schwab. Not for Josh. <laughs> and then, oh no, Angela didn't pick. That's right. Zach got two picks. But we did just finish um, into or er, Made in Abyss. Yes. Yes, that, that was, was great. Good. The last three episodes are graphic, but that was good. I cried my, a lot. My favorite anime though is called Kino's Journey. That's probably number number one. Cowboy Bebop, obviously, is pretty great. I love Gurren Lagann. I love Studio Trigger, so most things that they make just for the animation. And then, if we're going back in the day, if we're considering it anime, I love Digimon. But I don't want to rewatch it because I think it will kill some of my nostalgia for it. And then... Oh, what was another one? Oh, surprisingly, I watched pretty much all of Dragon Ball Z and a good chunk of Dragon Ball. So I know most of the lore... Which I think a lot of people like know me wouldn't think I'm into what are considered manames, but I love Dragon Ball Z. I thought it was great. Majin Buu, the fat one, yeah, one I, of my favorite villains of I all time. I do not like Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> but did you watch Sailor Moon? See, I didn't even kind watch Sailor of. Moon. It was too confusing really to me it. as a kid. And I remember thinking it was like scandalous because one of the villains looked like do, do you remember in Yu-Gi-Oh! the Harpy Sisters? Yes. They were very scantily dressed. Oh, yeah. But I remember in Sailor Moon, <laughs> they also had these very scantily dressed harpy looking things. And I was like, I don't think I'm old enough to be watching this. I just remember Dark Magician, though, from Yu-Gi-Oh! Yep. I know that was like the joke. Ugh. I don't know. Who was the guy? Pegasus. I love I Pegasus. Love Pegasus. But when Yu-Gi beat him, I stopped watching Yu-Gi-Oh! I oh, was really? done. I was like, I don't believe that he could have beaten him. So you imagine little 10-year-old me, like, huff and puff and be like, oh, that wouldn't happen. Like, I actually never down. watched formal Yu-Gi-Oh! I watched the Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge series. So my, oh. my understanding of Yu-Gi-Oh! is very skewed by that. Um, but we're going to keep going through these, though, because we are... I'm trying That's to right. Catch up. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. We have, we have to, like, stop the monologues about everything. <laughs> <laughs> but it's such good conversation. I know, I know. Um, Kendra says, I have a lot of sense in my greenhouse. Lily, one that reminds me... Of my grandma came up and it was such a warm hug since she's passed away last year. Oh. Yeah. See, that would be so one of your really, treasures. It is, actually. Um, <laughs> going, Fem says going going around answering the bullies. Josh says I'm magical, too. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Dylan says this has become a real wholesome stream. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm okay with that. Oh, Kendra says, I hear the birds in the background. Okay, she was hoping we wouldn't have to get, like, we could do a little copyright free bird sounds background, but. <laughs> Don't get They're not even YouTube. real birds. We're playing like an MB3 under the right. desk. <laughs> Don't want to get flagged by YouTube. Actually, I'm totally okay with this becoming more of a wholesome stream. Because I've had a lot of people just say they need an escape from what's happening in reality right now. And I feel that we've been fortunate enough to be in positions where, you know, we can work from home. We can do all this. And it, as much as, you know, being in quarantine isn't preferred we can still live our lives and do streams and make money online through sales. So hopefully we can also be encouraging to other people that maybe are going through kind of a down period through everything right now. So yeah. Hmm. Oh, and Fem says, I'm going to cry. Thank you. This was when you were complimenting her because I was complimenting Candor. You were complimenting Fem. Oh yeah. A lot of... of course. <laughs> Hugs all around. <laughs> My dad and brother would argue with that though. With what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um... Kendra says oh, some giveaways would be so sweet. Definitely, we should look into that. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think we'll do that. Forty thousand followers, Bernard stream is what Eric Siva says. <laughs> That'd be kind of fun, like a little bonfire outside. Yeah, because I mean, once we figure out how to do the streams outside, I mean, especially Just with spring Bernard and summer stream. Can you imagine? <laughs> I'd get a lot of angry people. I that think. would, yeah, that would not, have not go through well. Because I think without context, it either looks really pretentious or angry. You know, so I think we'll give it a little more context. Yeah, we'll get there. Candor says just put an orange or citrus fruit on top of the tank. Cats tend to stay stay away from those. Oh, I did not know that. We'll try that out. But the only problem is knowing me, I'd let it sit for too long and just be really moldy. <laughs> yes, I will find another. Wait, this is wait. I don't want to just rant on like things because I, I don't. <laughs> Tim's great, but but but. <laughs> Tim also will, like, leave carrot, the stem parts, in the most <laughs> random spots of the house. And, like, I won't always find them until they're literally, like, brown or, like, shriveled up. It's so disgusting. But it's just another, it's another Tim thing. Just carrot stems. I can't deny it. I can't, you, you know, I just don't understand why you can't make it to the trash. But it's, like, one of those things I've just learned. I've, I've conditioned myself <laughs> to love it. <laughs> I have Actually, to look at that carrot and be like, wow, I love Tim. <laughs> <Gross. laughs> cute, tender moments. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go to the bathroom really quick. Oh, yeah. But you can keep catching up. Yeah, I'm going to keep them. catching up. I've been doing too much to eat. Yeah. Drea says, as a child, many therapists diagnosed me with something called, um, is it empath empathic locust? Interesting. Those auras you guys are talking about, I can basically taste in the air. It's very apparent to me. Oh, that's really cool, actually. You can just kind of be in touch with people around you. I don't think I've ever heard that that phrase, empath empathic locust. Um, Fem says it's not your fault when your backpack gets stolen. You set it down for you set it down for a second doesn't mean someone else is allowed to take it. I completely agree. I wish if we lived in a perfect world that wouldn't be the case, but we also have to somewhat protect ourselves, you know. Kendor says, my husband loses everything all the time, too, and I'm the one knowing where it is. He keeps forgetting his phone in restaurants and I usually pocket it. I do that. Sometimes I'll, like, take something from him and hide it for a little bit just to, like, watch him get flustered. It's kind of fun to do. <laughs> Fem, get a fanny pack and never take it off. Keep everything in those with clips with small ropes attached to it. It's really scary because Tim does actually have a little carrot fanny pack that he wears. Actually, Tim, where is your carrot fanny pack? Oh, next to the bed upstairs. Yeah, Tim does have a fanny pack that's a carrot. <laughs> oh, that should be another emoji I should make. That's like a that carrot. thing. Uh, since I've been like going after you with carrots around the house and stuff, one thing about Tim I do appreciate is he like does not care. So he can go outside in public with a little carrot fanny pack and not care. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I think I'm still too conscious of like <laughs> my parents when I go out. So Tim's teaching me to just not Don't worry care. about that as much. Yeah. Yeah. 
Actually, this is a good time really quick for me to inject because I have everything kind of laid out for the value pass that I was talking about. So now I'm going to start doing the secondary forms and I'm going to start cutting as I call it. And that's where you're, or edging, whatever you want to call it, where I'm going to be doing a little bit more defined outlines everywhere. And then we're going to render inside of that. So first I'll do some kind of cutting throughout and then I'll render within. So hopefully I don't lose track too much because sometimes when we're having a good conversation, I tend to go all over the place with drawing. Mm -hmm. But hopefully I can kind of stay on track here. All right, you can take it back over. Okay. We're getting close to catching up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Kendra says, to be fair, in Korea, you can leave your laptop, phone, wallet, everything on the table in a cafe and go to the toilet or whatever. Here, no one steals. There's a superstition about it. Oh. That's maybe where Tim needs to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, Wisconsin's pretty similar. It is pretty Except good. for, like, the, for the city. Most part. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just annoying... I mean, granted, just don't purposely leave stuff out, but you're fine. <laughs> Eric Ziva says, one of my favorite drawings that I loved, I'd given to my mom because I assumed she would actually keep it somewhere safe. Now I can't find it, and it drives me furious. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kendra says, my Animal Crossing obsession is so endearing. Thank you. Some would see it maybe a different way. <laughs> Some would see it as an unhealthy ad addiction or maybe a dependency <laughs> to escape from reality. But you know, that's cool. There's a lot going on in the world right now. It's a, it's a good reality to be in for a bit. <laughs> that is true. Simon says, I've returned. Oh, well, welcome back, Simon. Welcome back. We're having the most wholesome stream talks today. I, I got a little deep there for a bit. Um, Kendra says, Cutway Bebop and Vision of Escal... <laughs> I can't speak, guys. Escaflone are my absolute favorite. Oh, Escaflone. 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 Es Escaflone. Escaflone. Perfect. Flone. <laughs> um, um, Simon says, my favorite anime of all time is Inuyasha. Really? You know, that's another one where, as a kid, I thought the themes were... I don't know. I, these went over my head, so I didn't watch it. So I have not seen any of Inuyasha. I do love, uh, I think it's Inuyasha's older brother. Oh, what's his name? I feel like I used to know this. His design, though, is great. Hmm. Here, wait. Really quick. Google Inuyasha older yeah. brother. Um, Tell me what you think. I liked that one we watched that we did only a couple episodes of that you would add. It was a really weird one, though, with that little boy with the blonde hair. That's Naruto. Naruto. Like... <laughs> No, uh, um, it was the cute, the little boy with the long hair. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, Kaiba. Kaiba, yeah. Yeah, Kaiba was one. great. But we were watching with someone that doesn't necessarily like sexual themes, and the third or second episode had a pretty heavy sexual that's theme. Yeah, that's him. Oh, wow. That hair is fabulous. You look at his outfit. I like that furry little shoulder piece. So then when he's in the show, like whenever he walks around, he has a giant, he just looks so cool. Oh, wow. that's the only thing I know about the show is how much I thought he was cool but he definitely falls in the line of like gaudy and presenting over the top <laughs> um, we have Kendra saying I love the 90 Sailor Moon started with four years old wow because yeah, how long I mean Cat even too didn't she like Sailor Moon for yeah. a long time because I think yeah. that was what late 80s early 90s possibly it came out so I think that you know we lived through all of Sailor Moon <clears throat> um, Drea says Mushishi and Mushishi I could watch and replay one of my original mm -hmm. characters inspired by um, is it Kinko? yep right? okay I liked I like Mushishi actually We're yeah so Josh episode. has never yeah. seen it and I it's been the, a joy um, not the opening the ending credit song I think is the one I really liked I like the yes. music in that movie or show a lot it's there, there are a lot of uh, subtle in the way that they hit the notes it'll just be like a bell but the way they chime it and they put a little echo on it after so, it's very pretty it's so good <laughs> <laughs> um, doo, 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 doo. I'm, it's scrolled on me okay here we are Candor says which Harry Potter houses are you guys again <laughs> um, Kendra says, I'm Hufflepuff and my hubby is Ravenclaw. Well, surprisingly, wow. 
I'm Hufflepuff. And I'm Ravenclaw. Yeah. I really wanted to be a Hufflepuff, but I know in my heart of hearts that I am definitely a a Ravenclaw. Yeah, you're not as... You're too diligent, I guess, to be... A, I don't know how to find these are diligent. You're studious, though. Yeah. Yeah. I was definitely the... I like to sit in the front row. I like to take notes. Like, I was that type of student, for sure. <laughs> Kendra says, I love your wholesome streams. They are such a sweet change. <laughs> um... Clouds twenty three X says you would probably like Natsum's Book of Friends anime Tim. Book of Friends. I don't. I haven't, I haven't heard of this one either. Ooh, oh, this looks like a. Ooh, oh. it's an Astrid. Oh my, oh my gosh! <laughs> There's an Astrid cat. I love this. That's what you think Astrid looks like. <laughs> can you post that in the Discord so people can see what? This is the image that Josh thought looked like Astrid. <laughs> I put it in the stream follow along just so that it's not like hanging out. No, it's too. I mean, I know that it has the same color pattern, but <laughs> for that to be your That's answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh my god. It's definitely an Astrid. You're too funny. Hang on. Oh my gosh. I'm so used to having two monitors, so when I'm just using my laptop, I'm like trying to drag and drop things, and it just doesn't work out as good. Mm -hmm. So mixed in the middle of these beautiful bird drawings is this Astrid picture. <laughs> All right. Oh, boy. Poor Astrid. It's getting slandered on the stream with no way to defend herself. <laughs> Carrie Sada says, yep, with the quarantine, I returned to draw after not drawing for two years, and it's awesome. Oh, good. Oh, that's good. That's a really cool and, like, good things come out of these bad situations. Mm-hmm. Totally agree. <laughs> Bartek says, you're the wholesome streamer. <laughs> <laughs> we have... Too kind. <laughs> Fem says, reminds me of the story when you left apples in your backpack and then after too long took it out and ate it. <laughs> I don't know if I know that story. I that I know, so. That's I I kind of know what happened though, and that's grossing me out right now. I think though, well, apples I did one time, but I always kept carrots in my backpack. <laughs> but I always put them in the side backpack part where they could they were exposed. So whenever I wore and went to school, I'd always have like three carrots on the side of my backpack. I just there I've had some like gag worthy experiences with Tim and his fruits and vegetables that are left out. <laughs> And yeah, sometimes I am bad with that. Yeah. There's like, I'm not, you know what, I'm not even going to mention the one do you time know I why, like, Tim, this is just gross. But do you know what happens usually? I'll set it down mid-eating it, and then forget that I was eating. Because I'll usually be like running around the house, and if I eat, like if I pull out a carrot, I'll start eating it, and I'll be like, oh, I got to get something from the basement. I'll put it down. I'll get something from the basement, and I've already forgotten that it's I was It's just like the carrot. places I find those carrots, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, my god. Like gosh. random desks. Yeah. It's like spots you machine. won't check all the time, so it just yeah sits there for a few days. Um, Ooh, I can't even defend myself because it's true. <laughs> At least I'm not alone with this. Kendra says again, a hubby thing as well, leaving half-eaten food etc. out forever. <laughs> yeah, I'll own it. I'll definitely own it. Oh. Uh... Oh, yeah, Kyle, hello. Hey, Kyle's here. Yeah, Kyle was up, all Kyle? about Drea yeah. talking about the em empathic locust. So yeah. one of our, our good friends, Kyle, he's an empathy therapist. <laughs> so he is the perfect person to talk to about this kind of stuff. <laughs> but yeah, oh my gosh, yeah, Drea should talk with Kyle a bit, though. I'm actually really curious about that, too. Like, what I've never heard that phrase before, an empathic locust. I think you were in the bathroom when I mentioned it. But I was going to say, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, Drew was saying her therapist, her child therapist when she was growing up, they multiple of them said that she has is an empath empathic locust and can like, hang on, actually, I'm going to try to find where she wrote it because she'll phrase I've it. I've never enough. heard that phrase but Essentially, before. though, can like pick up and feel people's, I guess, auras, how we were talking about that. Um. Those auras you guys are talking about, I can basically taste in the air. It's very, very apparent to me. That's what oh. Andrea said. So that's interesting. Um, 
Yes, yeah, Kander, please post. Um, Kander's asking, can we post work in progress of our birds? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, throw those on. Oh, yeah, I should have mentioned that at the beginning. If you want to show the stages of your bird progressing, I feel like I should have done that too. Oh, no, I'm using my phone to record right now. But yeah, please do. Um, <laughs> the bird is virally puffy and cute, is what Vera said. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very cute bird. I like the run. Oh, you know what we could do after you catch up on the comments? Could you look up just a few facts about the run, and then we'll we'll talk about the bird we're growing. Oh yeah, because I, me, I always I'm find literally it literally like three more. I have to I'm almost caught up with these. Okay, okay, okay. You go. You go. Let's just yeah, and then we'll get some facts pulled up. Um, he says it's not cool, but it, it's not cool. It sounds cool, but large masses of people are hard for me. But it makes me a good listener. Yeah, I'm really curious about that, Drea. Um, Eric Ziva says, I tend to redo art ideas all the time. Burning art, therefore, is just not a good idea unless you actually have already redone the piece. Um, yeah, it's definitely, I think, like we were saying, I think burning the art is definitely something that's person to person and how they feel about the symbolism of doing it or not. Ex that's exactly yeah. it. Because so, for some people, it's very therapeutic. It's a way of like letting go. Uh, Kenner says, you guys need to watch Vision of Escaflown. The style is very special and the anime itself is very magical. Yeah, we have a really big list of animes now. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's so many There's so many out there. Um, well, it's like you have to sift through the garbage anime because there's a lot of that. I mean, I've seen a lot of anime where I'm like, what is this? <laughs> Simon says, now I have to watch it again for like the fifth, five thousand, five, oh my gosh, I can't speak, five thousandth time. Which one? I, well, was it Mushishi? Was... Or was it Naruto? <laughs> oh, Simon says, I'm always finding Jesse's stuff. He's constantly losing things everywhere. We're forgetting about it. Yeah, I feel like there always is like that one person in the relationship that tends to just be a little bit more relaxed with their stuff. I'm trying to remember which. Oh, um, Inu Inuyasha is what Simon was talking about. Oh, the whole anime. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Kendra says, "No wonder Hubby and Tim are so similar, and Josh and I are." <laughs> <laughs> Kyle says, oh, "I'm so mad. I took the quiz a couple years ago and was Gryffindor and hated that." And then I got put into Ravenclaw most recently, which I hate more. <laughs> Wait, Kyle, what do what you want? What do you want, Slytherin? Oh, yeah. No, Kyle, didn't you want to be Hufflepuff, too? I feel like these actions are very much tendencies of a Slytherin. <laughs> Everyone wants to be Hufflepuff because we're just cool, but, like, you guys can't. Everyone can't just be Hufflepuff. I know. Hufflepuff is the cool one. <laughs> well, it's funny. Back in the day, I, I don't I know if like this was for you growing up, people used to make fun of Hufflepuff all the time. And, like, that's where, like, the losers went. Oh, yeah. But now, that's where all the cool kids go is to Hufflepuff. I used to listen to this podcast called, oh, my gosh, what, Pottercast. And one of the <laughs> hosts of that show, I loved her, and she was a Hufflepuff for, like, the, ever. And I don't know if it was her that started the whole trend, but I remember I was like, I love her, I relate to her, and I was like, I'm definitely Hufflepuff. I got Hufflepuff, I was so happy about it. But like, Yeah, you're definitely yeah, Hufflepuff. Yeah, I was a Hufflepuff before it was cool. <laughs> just so everyone knows. For the oh, record. yeah, just for the record. <laughs> um, Simon says, what's the hard blackness of the pencil you God, use? I to... love when you say Simon says, because I think you're saying, Simon says, raise your hand. <laughs> I never even thought I was doing that. <laughs> but what was the question? <laughs> Simon states, <laughs> what's, the hard, what's the hard blackness of the pencil used to cut? Oh, yes. I always find my edges and lines aren't dark punchy enough, but if I use too black of a pencil, it's too soft to get clean lines. Mm -hmm. So I, I've been uh, cutting with a mechanical pencil. This is an HB pencil. And oftentimes I won't go darker than HB in my drawings unless if I really want to punch something darker in the value. But for something like this, since it's primarily all a 2H pencil, I, I don't need to go too much darker. So if you're finding that things aren't blending well or things are smudging too much or kind of like what you're saying, I would try working lighter and then as you're cutting, work more toward like a HB, somewhere in the middle of the range. Because doing really nice clean lines on a very small scale with a darker pencil is very difficult. Just because the darker pencils, the the bees. Let me see if I have one. 
So this 8B, where did I put my first drawing? So you can see how it wants to get thicker quicker, where with a tighter pencil, I mean, you can see how even though these have roughly the same tip, the darker pencil still is a little thicker just because of how dark it is. And plus, when you're trying to erase it, watch what happens. See how the H basically goes away entirely, but the B pencil is just there, you know, forever because it's ingrained in the paper. So that's why I try to avoid working with darker pencils until I know for sure that's where I want to punch out the values. Oh my god, I almost started using it. <laughs> uh, so yeah. That would have been a good learning lesson. Right. Um, <clears throat> Femme says, I mean, it's the same. I don't know what that was in reference to now, but That's with cat. it probably, probably was a cat moment there with something. That was when she drew Sonic. She's like, it's the same. Yeah, that's the best. <laughs> Oh gosh, that should be one of the emojis on here too. I love that. <laughs> That's the most awkward looking emoji on the Discord server too. <laughs> yeah, so if any of you are on our Discord and you look at the available emojis, there's one of a Sonic that Kat drew and it was on a stream where it was draw blind and she drew Sonic and she thought it looked exactly like <laughs> the <laughs> real one. <laughs> I just love that the emo on the Discord though still has the white background also. Oh, you gotta, just yeah. Just keeps it. Keep it framed yes. like a great piece of art should be. <laughs> um, a really quick, really quick. Uh, so for some of the values, rather than making it a solid value, instead I'm doing a texture value where you lightly graze the paper with a pencil and it builds up the value but also gives some texture to the bird because this bird if you look on the body has a lot of texture going down of it and I want to capture it and the most efficient way to do it would be do like little strokes all right um also everyone if you want to keep checking out the discord because we um looks like we have two work in progresses so far from Carissa and Candor. hey um how are they looking really good Candor, I love the pencil that she's using too. Ooh! Right? Oh, you got that tail feather looking good. I love the little fur on the neck there too. Mm -hmm. So cute. So you and then, oh, Candor's is a good example of with that tail feather on how you're using the strokes of the pencil to emulate the uh, values, but also the texture of the tail, which is great. Just a reminder, it's on the Discord server, everyone, under current events, and then stream following, you can see these. Mm -hmm. And then here's Carissa's here. Look at that little cutie. <laughs> I like, he kind of looks a little angry, but that's because the reference, he also looks a little angry. That's right. Like, mine looks a little too passive right now. I need my mine look a little more angry. Too. They always have, like, that determined look on their face, though. Birds or just this bird? Birds. I mean, this one specifically, though, too. He just has, like, a I'm ready... You know, I agree. Time to forage. There's always the something that they could be doing. Yeah. They're always thinking. Hmm. Yeah, those tails are so good. <laughs> so now I'm going to start working on the actual wings of the bird. So this will probably take me the longest. So I'm going to turn it to the side. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to rotate my reference. <laughs> Oh, it stays the same on the stream. Okay, perfect. Oh, cool. Because I want to do a lot of vertical lines, and since this is the natural direction of my wrist and hand, I always recommend turning the paper whenever doing something like this so that it, you're not fighting the direction of your hand placement. You're working with it. But anyways, continue. Okay, continue on. Or are we actually caught up? We're not caught up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've not been caught up. This I need to stop trying to catch up. It's not working for me. Um, I mean, it always gives us something to talk about. Oh no, yeah. Actually, I love that everyone's. I'm not trying to like. Also, don't please take me this. Keep typing, guys. <laughs> Keep typing, please. I just have this thing where I'm like feel really behind when I'm not. <laughs> I don't have to be caught up. But um, the beauty of a live stream. Exactly. This is keeping us talking, so it's perfect. Uh, Kyle did confirm Hufflepuff for sure. It would be Kyle. Hufflepuff Kyle. I, I admire Ravenclaws. I admire Gryffindors. I admire Slytherins. That's also a very yeah. Hufflepuff thing to say. 
being the best house. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, I think as you kind of understand who you are more, you kind of know the traits of what the houses that Rowling made up, and you're kind of like, yeah, I kind of fit in that. Rowling. Rowling. Like bowling. Oh, is it really? Yeah. JK. Oh, yeah, Rowling. What yeah. did I say? Rowling? Yeah. <laughs> like a tiger. <laughs> Rowling. <laughs> Rowling. <laughs> Can you imagine that's her, like if she went to Halloween dressed as a tiger, she'd be JK Rowling. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, continue. <laughs> um, we have. <laughs> oh, yeah, Drea is saying there's different locuses, like on a scale from one to ten, instead of one, it's internally locust or introverted people, externally locust or extroverted. Hmm. Oh. Then you have me, empathetically locust. It sounds like magic, it's really not. See, Drea, you don't have to say it's not magic. That's magical. Even though it's probably, like you were saying, though, I, I would think that's probably hard to live with because then you're, especially when you're in groups of people or around them, you can definitely get very drained by whatever their emotions could be, too. So I'd be a little bit exhausting. Sometimes even living with some certain people can be draining. Touche. This <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're probably the easiest person to live with. Yeah, I'm kind of a couch potato. <laughs> you are the potato. I'm of the potatoes. potato. Um, <laughs> Kandor says, "Oh yeah, Josh, we are the cool kids." Yeah, Hufflepuff's freaking awesome. <laughs> I mean, the thing about it too, Hufflepuff's went through a lot of stuff in the books too, like like never Cedric... being mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but like <laughs> Cedric, when Cedric um, was killed by Voldemort. Spoiler. Yeah, those are some tough things they went through. What? They had one person die. Didn't Gryffindor have a bunch of people die? I mean, yeah, after the Hogwarts battle, but I'm just saying in terms of, like, in the books, getting to that point. Do you know what really died by the fifth or sixth book? Snape? My hope that Hermione and Harry would stay together. Oh, yeah, you're one of those Harry Hermione shippers. Absolutely. Actually, well, yeah. I, I feel like I'm one of the few people that I just I did not like that Hermione and Ron ended up together. And I didn't like that Harry and Ginny. I think together. it was more romantic that way, though. For, uh, like a written yes. sense. Because I think Harry and Hermione are too safe. So Ron and Hermione, in terms of like literary, was more exciting or... Yeah. I guess, I guess. I was a Harry Hermione shipper back in the day, though. Oh, not, you were not in the anymore. same boat. Yeah, I was, but I, there was a podcast I listened. There was another podcast I listened to that was purely about she would read Harry and Hermione fan fiction stories, not like anything like <laughs> nasty. It was just like cute little like fan fictions people wrote about the two of them. Anyway, very interesting. Um, Fem says used to be a Griff when I was around eight, and I was so happy because that was it. But I'm so glad that a couple years ago. When I was around 15, I got Puff, because that is more me. I got Puff. <laughs> <laughs> Puffle Puff. But yeah, I feel like as we get older, we realize we are kind of every, we are kind of every house. We have facets of all of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> Simon says, would you recommend mechanical for cutting? <laughs> it's just... <laughs> Simon, oops, Simon states, would yeah, you recommend mechanical for cutting because it's just a consistently uniform lead sharpness? I've never tried it, but it seems like it would be easier to get a cleaner line. Yeah, so uh, sometimes I'll use my HB pencils just because there is something with the feeling of traditional, but I usually cut with my point two, which is an even smaller. You can see just in the lead size, here, let me push both of them out. Let's see how well you can see this. There we go. So you can see how much thinner the point to two is compared to the point seven, which is the standard mechanical pencil size. So with this pencil, I'm really getting in there in tight detailing. But since I drew my bird a little bigger, just because of experience, I know how large to make things typically um, to cut. And for this bird, I made it bigger so that I could use a mechanical pencil that is a bit larger to help me save time. So if I'm doing a really intricate piece, I'll definitely use the point two, but I know it, on the back end it's going to take me longer. But for something like this, I would definitely recommend a mechanical pencil, which I know, a mo I guess, the academic way of saying it would absolutely not recommend a mechanical pencil. But 
you get the pass and okay from me. <laughs> uh, Kenor says, thank you, the tale was so fun. Yeah, you did a good job on that. <laughs> Uh, Unic did put a uh, work in progress too on the Discord. Oh, that's sweet. It's yeah. looking so good. Ooh. <laughs> like those little lines there. Mm hmm. <laughs> so I think something that maybe even might be helpful is if you do have different uh, hardness pencils, I can tell that you're going pretty dark, which is okay. But uh, for some of the lighter areas, I would use like a, a 2H or maybe even a 4H just to get some of those values. So it looks like you smudge some of the lighter areas, which can still work. I've seen a lot of people, and maybe this will be something you could do, where you blend it either with a finger or a smudge stick, and then you do some texture lines on top of it. That way you get the underlying value that you're looking for, but you're still adding the texture to give it the look of feathers on top. I know a lot of artists that do that, they'll smudge everything first, they'll make it have a very soft feel, and then they'll cut into it with hard lines and uh, texture looking strokes. Okay, there we go. Uh, Bartek says he looks as if he was pouting. I guess this, yeah, the bird does kind of look pouty a little bit too. Yeah. He's just, he's just you know, jealous of the popular birds in school. <laughs> I don't want to be a Hufflepuff. <laughs> <laughs> Any, I feel like anyone that's gotten Hufflepuff House though hasn't been ashamed of it. I don't think you're a Hufflepuff if you're ashamed of it. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. I don't think you're a true Puff Hufflepuff if you're ashamed to be a Hufflepuff. <laughs> Kendra says I have to turn the paper too because I lose agility in my wrist after surgery. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah, that would be rough. Is yeah, it, if you so ever need to do that. It's easier for you to draw the lines that way instead of doing it. Yeah, because if you're doing it like this, see the, the strain, strain here? Yeah. Or if I was doing it like this, you have to do awkward strain here. Oof. So they say to turn it, whatever is the most comfortable for your natural wrist movement. Although, the the true way of drawing is you're supposed to use your arm, not your wrist. So you're supposed to go like this. Which most people have it on a canvas, and they'll draw like this. Well, so it's their easier, arm. I guess, yeah, but if you're... I mean, I think it's to help prevent injury in the long run, but I've always found it way more comfortable and soothing to do small wrist movements. And I'm not turning my wrist like crazy much, but you know, like short, small ones. And I think if you stretch it and you take care of it, if you can kind of start to tell your hand is getting inflamed, you know, just take more breaks, take more rest, eat better, you know, do that, that kind of stuff uh, to help heal it because... If you're like me, I cannot use my whole arm all the time because I get tired. I physically get tired doing arm movements all the time. Well, word on the street is you have an arm stretch exercise on your YouTube. I do. Yeah. So if you want to check it out, I have three stretches that I, I do every day. I usually do it in the morning before I get started. And then at night, sometimes I'm laying in bed. And you can watch the video. I'm sure Josh will post it. Oh, yeah. But essentially then uh, that, that helps out with um, particularly carpal tunnel and just being careful you know I think if you're you're feeling tight while you're drawing that's a really good sign to maybe take a 15 minute break you know move it around relax it uh, don't push it don't strain it if it's already feeling really bad uh, I have a doctor as one of my uncles and he says that everyone always fabricates that their pain tolerance because when you go to a hospital you have to say 0 to 10 how painful is something so realistically, how painful is it? Where most people will be like, oh, it's 10 out of 10, it hurts. Well, no, 10 out of 10 is like you're dying. There is a pole through your stomach. You are bleeding out. That's 10 out of 10 pain. <laughs> so I always relate it to if it's a three, four or lower, yes, I think you could work through it. But as soon as you hit four or five, I mean, that's when I think, okay, you need to take a break, slow down. And anything more than that, for sure, I would stop and take a break or do something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that says uh, to you you're sure you're not a Gryffindor growling <laughs> <laughs> I mean I do have Gryffindor tendencies too but as a whole I'm definitely a Ravenclaw 
Eric Ziva says what I'm thinking for that pun joke. You are canceled. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ken- Unsubscribe. Kendra says, yes, just kidding, growling. <laughs> JK, <laughs> get it? <laughs> JK, just kidding, gro- growling. Oh, no, don't explain it. <laughs> You know, you're making it just really hard for me to catch up on these. Um, I do have a problem. I do talk a lot. Carrie Sada, Sada says, I agree. I prefer Hermione Harry. Sarah yeah, Barra says, I was a Harry. Oh, hey, Sarah Barra. Sarah, Sarah Barra. I says, I was a Harry Hermione fan, too. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Simon states, <laughs> Simon says, awesome, thanks. I will def try it. I need to buy smaller mechanical pencils. I only have a... Uh, 0. 0.7. Oh, yeah. So this is an O-R-E-N-Z, O-R-E-N-Z uh, mechanical pencil. It's 0. 0.2. You can find these online. They're not that expensive. I think they're around $10. I think they're actually cheaper than $10. And I would definitely highly recommend it. Um, Candor says, how much time is left in the stream? Um, Probably at least 20 minutes, just because I want to do some good detailing on the rock as well. Adria says, I mean, Hufflepuff has Eddie... Uh, Redmayne, so it's a win. I completely agree. Oh, that's I had a right. Big He's crush the... on him. Um, Newt. Newt's commander. Yeah. Newt's great. <laughs> but yeah, I love. I actually like Eddie Redmayne a lot. I put. A, I back in the day, I had a little post on my Instagram about how I have a crush on him. Eddie Redmayne. Yeah. <laughs> um. Eddie Redmayne or Newt's commander. I mean, honestly, both. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Simon says, being a hairstylist has taught me one thing. Take care of those wrists and keep them straight. Same with uh, playing the piano. You're supposed to play it like this, right? Yeah, you're supposed to technically have your hands like... You're basically supposed to be hitting your fingertips. Oh. I remember I always did that wrong, too. Yeah. Well, that's why my piano teacher would always yell at me, because I was my nails are always longer. Like, see, even right oh. now, they're like... You can't see them right in the glares, but... They're really long, so they're technically not good for playing piano. I did not know that. Yeah, I used to get yelled at a lot about it. There's something about going in for a piano lesson every week and having your piano teacher yell about your hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, Simon, I don't think I'm your hairstylist. I feel like I'm learning so many things about you, and I'm still learning new things about you. I had no idea. I only knew that because on his Instagram, one of his description things said hair something with hair. I was like, oh. Yeah, that's true, though, because even a hairstylist, that's hard when you're, because you're using, especially when they're using the scissor a lot, I feel like their wrists are being put in all different directions. Um, Eric Ziva says, was way too much into the content that the Harry, fandom, Harry Potter fandom made. I would just read a bunch of copied posts from Tumblr and Inger. <laughs> yeah, there is so much, I don't know. The podcast well, at the time, there was, I remember I was all into that stuff. So I listened to like three different podcasts. There was Pottercast, Mogglecast, um, Harmony. I listened, that was the Harry Hermione one. They called them Her- Harmony Shepherds. Harmony? Yeah, that was uh, the name kind of it. That's kind of cute, actually. I always think of, we have a friend, Joyce, and she ships Harry and Draco. Uh, was it Drary? Oh, yeah, Drary. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a big thing. And apparently it's making a comeback because now I see it at cons. Or maybe it's just because now I'm aware of it. I see it more often. People are, yeah. Into yeah, people love that. <laughs> I think it's always the shipping of uh, like a bad guy or like a bad kid who just has a good heart but had bad upbringing or like is on the wrong side. Oh, and yeah. And it's like good hearted, noble guy. I think the shipping of that has always been intriguing to people. There was the, we watched that video about that. There's this channel called The Take and they described the bad boy trope. <gasps> really well i would say i almost just give it a watch in time because it explains that. that whole concept though of like the troubled boy they and go through stereotypes usually that are it's typically like a, seen usually it's movies. a girl like usually yeah. it's a girl they need to like change them but yeah well the girl feels like oh i can change him because he has a good heart but i know i can work with that to make him not feel so sad or angry anymore right and they're basically saying on screen that works but in reality, it's kind of cr- very, very unhealthy dynamics. Um, off topic, but let's see, Candor. Oh yeah, the scar. The what? Candor, the scar, the surgery <gasps> scar. Oof, yeah. oof. 
that honestly terrifies me, the idea of getting oh. surgery on my wrist. Oh. Oh, that's that figure. The new figure is so cute. Oh, that is a great figure. Right? Look at that hair. The hair is beautiful. That's how I like to draw I hair. I like that it's one little shaped. front curl, how it like swings uh -huh. to that way and then back. <laughs> like a net post. Thank you, Kandor, for sharing. <laughs> I like these Tim advice things everyone's doing now. Because they had them earlier. Oh, no. What's the Tim advice? Well, earlier, if I'm in Kandor, we're saying... Um, what was it? Tim's advice about um, not smearing. When someone asked how you do not smudge, oh. and they were like, Tim's advice, don't smudge. <laughs> now we have another one. I like this one from Dan. How to take care of wrist. This is Tim's advice. How to take care of wrist. Let the third wrist do all the work and replace it when it's broken. <laughs> Tim advice. Right, Tim advice. 2020. Um, Kandor says, don't forget they do have metal ones from the Orins now. The normal Orins are around 9 to $10. The metal versions are around 16 I know. I still haven't got my metal one. I've been uh, very hyper-focused about spending money right now, unless if it's something for the stream. Like, that's why I have these goals for donations, because then I feel okay or, like, justified buying it. <laughs> that's why getting all the stuff for the greenhouse and doing the planting stream next week I feel okay with. But once this is all kind of hopefully dies down, I, I definitely plan on getting one of the metal ones. But there's something about the ye yellow has become one of my favorite colors, if not my favorite color. So it's kind of fun having a, a colored yellow one. I think the metal ones would be nice, though, to not have the plastic. Exactly. Yeah. Especially now that we're trying to move away from plastic in every regard for the business stuff, uh, I think I would switch to metal. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Fem says both is the only correct answer. Yes to Eddie and to Newt. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Unic says, do you have any advice on the feet? Oh, yeah. So I'm currently just trying to get a good chunk of the underbelly done here. And a lot of it is just little strokes. Because if you look at the bottom of the bird, there's so much texture and differentiating values that... Uh, rather than try to capture every single one, I'm trying to allude to a bunch. And then I'll move to the foot and the rock, and we'll talk about that some more. But let me just finish up here, and then we'll move down. <laughs> Arxiva says the movies did Ron dirty, and the later books did so too. Ron was just turned into the funny goofball, which just seemed lazy. Character writing, in my opinion, of course. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of talk about that, too. Um, in, wait, in what way? In terms of how Ron... And they do this to a lot of characters. You can watch it in like movies, TVs, and books, too, where they'll kind of dumb down a character more. And they almost play to being the dumb oh, character. Oh, gotcha. Um, trying to think of a good um, example of that. I mean, Ron like, would be a good example. Is it Kevin? Not Kevin. I think it was, I think it was the right one, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin on The Office, I feel like, was another character. They kind of did that too, too. Where he started off very strong, and I feel like he had more dynamics, and then later seasons he kind of just became really dumb. And I don't know why. Oh, I get it. Like, yeah, one it's almost like playing just to that then. Um, more than... They're more of a character than just that, though. Um... Simon says, I always want, I've always wanted to do art for a living, but I decided to get a backup job I could always fall back on mm. that was still creative. Example, hairstyling. Been doing it for four years. Good for you. I could use some help with my hair, so. Yeah. If you ever come to Wisconsin, you could give us both haircuts, because <laughs> I rarely get haircuts. I just cut it myself, and it's usually like me in the bathroom with a, a buzz razor, and I just kind of go for it. But I honestly could use a good haircut one of these days. You actually surprisingly do a pretty good job though, because there's never really too many like dips or anything in your hair. Like it's pretty. I mean, pretty even. Probably be better. Sometimes you can miss, but for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> All right, really quick, I'm gonna turn this again. So yeah, we're gonna talk about the feet a little bit, and then get into the rocks. So the bird body, I'm pretty much finished with. 
I might do some touch-ups after the stream, but honestly, I feel pretty good about it. But sometimes when I'm doing stream, I can't look directly down on it because it would be off the camera. And then that's where I could really look and kind of zoom in on areas that I want to fix. But the feet are really interesting because a bird's foot is like a bunch of these. Uh, let me grab my. It has a bunch of this type of look to it where. Oops. It's kind of like when you stack teacups on top of one another, and it creates this weird stacking look. And then the center will be the highlight part that you want to shade around it to make it look like it has form. So as we're doing it on the bird, I try not to edge out every single one of those lines. Instead, I'll allude to it a little bit. And then oftentimes, I'll have the highlight cut through. So let me see if I have a reference. <laughs> so on the hawk, you can definitely see a lot of, little bit of that ridging that I'm talking about. <laughs> so you can see here a little bit. I'm alluding to it without being, you know, too edging out. I think if you make it or try to make it look too perfect, it'll actually look worse. So always allude to it. And you can see here I, I did some of that rather than doing a hard edge on everything. This is kind of a trick with art in general where you do more of a hard edge on the outside, and especially if you're doing like tattooing stuff, but uh, on the inside, you go a little lighter. So I'm gonna be doing some of that here with this bird. But anyways, as I'm doing that, I'll let Josh keep catching up. <laughs> or are we actually caught up? Oh, no, we're not. Okay. <laughs> Don't even ask anymore, because. <laughs> <laughs> but I love it. I love that from so talkative today too. It helps us to like keep oh, conversation yeah. going too, so it's great. Um, because <laughs> Drea says, Inger, now we have growlings and grings. <laughs> I actually don't know what that is. I used to be an Inger a lot. I just haven't been on there for a while. Um, but I always loved that community. It was pretty laid back. Um, Eric Ziva says, I think the ship content might have made a comeback due to people no longer paying attention to the canon, as in <laughs> death of author. Like fans are just taking the setting and running with it. Yeah. yeah. I think that's true. the beauty of those kind of things, though, is people do kind of make it their own. They kind of immerse themselves in that world and make it how they want it to be, I guess, in a way. Um, Kendra says, I either the choice, um, I had the choice either to get a paralyzed wrist or have surgery and probably save it. Yeah, Ooh. that was, that's a tough choice, but I think, yeah, the surgery was the smart, smart choice. I mean, if that's what you had to do to keep drawing, I mean, I would have done the same thing. So I, I feel you on that. That is scary, though. Like That's terrifying. Because you don't know the outcome of those things until afterwards. Like, now you can be like, it was a smart choice. But in that moment, I'm sure that was, it was scary deciding what to do, not knowing what would happen. Yeah, those are very nerve-wracking situations. Absolutely. I'm one of those people, too. I feel like sometimes we're so Google conditioned that basically most things that happen in your life, we can Google to get advice on or find, like... <laughs> But then there's those things that come up in your life where you're like, I can't, I don't know. You know, there's not really like a set path for this. You have to decide for yourself. And those are scary. Kind of like pandemics right now. We don't really have answers for them. And I think that's what makes me anxious about it sometimes is I always want to have an answer for things. And I can't, I don't have an answer for it. But it's got to do our best. got to just be content. <laughs> Kendra says, yeah, the figures like the new are called G Pusket. They are great in packaging too. I'll have to see those because that's, I like that. There's a lot of figures I don't like that yeah. in my list of ones I do. If anyone likes these, I apologize in advance, but I hate pop figures. Like, I, There's only three things I hate in life right now. It's Ooh. excuses, the, the sweaters at conventions of the girls with, I, this is kind of explicit, but they, I'll just say they have things on their face and they're doing a very specific O face. I hate those sweaters. And then pop figures. <laughs> I just I hate them so much. I always joke that if I uh, end up in hell, my hell will be <laughs> a pop stand of just like an infinite number of pop figures that I can't escape from. And the pre people that are running the pop stand are the people in those themed sweaters that I hate oh my gosh, giving excuses man. as to why they're so good. <laughs> I secretly hid one of my pop figures from Tim for a while when we first met. 
And then when I was moving, it secretly got shown. And I was like, oh, yeah. I have a pop figure, Tim. I mean, if you have and you love it, you know, power to you. I just I can't see. You know, serious about those. They're really um, too it was about at them. Um, when I was at Emerald City, I think was one of my first saw the like. I didn't realize people will line up for hours yeah. just to get limited edition ones. <laughs> it was when I realized people will line up for garbage, like literal trash. I think some people <laughs> find pops just intriguing. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> no, you're not. Don't, I just, don't lie. Yeah, not a fan. Yeah, yeah. That's all I'll say about that. Not a fan. Oh. Really quick, I'm going to talk about the texture of the rock. So in this case, sometimes I'll do what I call blurring and I'll look at the image and I'll try to see the values without seeing the detail. And that will help me first lay down the values on the drawing. So in this case, the rock. And you can see we've done some of that. But then as I'm laying down the values, I'm not looking at the details. Oh, well, thank you, oh, JJ, JJ Lee. Lee. Uh-oh. You know what that means. We oh. hit the goal. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we did. We hit a goal. I'm going to have to... Oh, here it goes. Time to play a game. <laughs> so, I think that Wilmy and I will do a League of Legends stream next week. So, thank you for subscribing. Uh, so, yeah. I'm going to first lay out some of the values, and then I'll go in and do the detailing. And that's, I think, what uh, the question before was asking, is how would I approach the rocks? And I'll show you exactly how we'll do it. Back to you, Shua. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Candor says, I actually restarted drawing because of the surgery. I had two holes in my lunatum bone, one of the carpal bones. Oof. The surgery was not 100% successful, though, but it's better than before. Yeah, that Candor. is rough. Candor. And now you are drawing beautiful things, despite, <laughs> I'm sure it hurts sometimes when you're even drawing. Kendra's working on the um, the feet as well right now. There's a little progress prick. Isn't this like a monster of a foot? Like this little puff of a bird has this massive, scaly, reptile, dinosaur-looking foot. onto that rock. It's great. I love it. Mm -hmm. Sarah Bear says having surgery is so scary. I only had one in my life on my foot, and I really do not want to go through that ever again. Yeah, that is. Surgery is just not. <laughs> it's not a good experience. It's even the whole prepping, the mindset beforehand. I, it's just not fun. I've only had one in my life too, and never, never. I mean, technically, because you got your wisdom teeth out, right? Yeah. Technically, oral surgery. I guess yeah, too. Um, I think honestly, though, just having something where they're either having to break stuff or move Ugh. stuff, that to me is just, yeah. Um, Too much. <laughs> Drea does agree with you. Oh my God, peeps are hideous and bad for the environment. Cough. <laughs> they're, they're just pure plastic. Packaged in more plastic. <laughs> yeah. On another note, though, these ones that you shared, Candor, are so cute. I'm looking at... Oh yeah, those are like, cute. Look at this Harry Potter one, too. I like that they give the... Um, there's this one of Harry Potter and his cloak's like blowing in the wind too. Mm -hmm. I feel like it gives the model a little bit more life because the pops are so stiff too. And that's oh. one part I don't like about them. But these actually oh. have life to them. What are the other figures? I actually like the look of, oh, you know, I have a couple. The one of Link that I have, those figures I really like. Oh yeah, those are good too. Of. Yeah, they give them a little bit more personality. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Eric Zia says those are is it Ahagio uh, Ahagio shirts? Is that how you say it? These ones? The ones, the pop ones? Is that what you're referring to? I don't want people to Google this, so let me <sighs> Oh Yes Yes, that is the hoodie I hate yeah, those hoodies. Like I said, there's not many things I hate in this world. Well, I, that is one of those things. I well, hate. it's funny because everyone says it's like supposed to be ironic, but it's like you're still walking around with a sweater. It just, especially at a con, I just, ugh. 
I don't know. Maybe I'm too prude because I always think of the kids that will have to look at that and be like, what is happening? And then the parents have to awkwardly explain, oh, that's just a girl being silly. Like, I can't even imagine how the parents would try to explain that to a kid. But weirdly enough, they're starting to get banned. At the last con we went to, they were legit banned. You can't wear them. Or at Anime Milwaukee, remember the announcement of if anyone's walking around with that type of uh, clothing, they will be asked to change. <laughs> um, sorry, I feel like I'm slowing down, trying to... Yeah, what's going on? No, sorry, I was, I'm loving these. I was looking at these figures. I got way too sidetracked there. <laughs> um, Ella says, now, no, I know what I will draw for Halloween if I want to scare Tim. One of those pop, pop figures, figures giving excuses and wearing a sweatshirt with an, <laughs> with an office. <laughs> Literally the worst gift I could ever receive is a pop figure. <laughs> I remember I got one and I couldn't even hide my like discontent for it. I was like... Oh, actually, just so you know, I don't think I want this. Oh, my gosh. So I gave it back. <laughs> but you get Tim. You know, I'm bad with hiding emotion, yeah, like no, how I, mean... I feel. I think, but that's why people usually enjoy my company, because I never fake it with people. If I enjoy something, I'll show it. If I don't enjoy something, I'll I think show I it. grew up way too formal. And then even still now, like any conversation or gift giving, you know, like my parents are very like, when you get a gift, there's a way you oh, respond yeah. to it. And I feel like I can't ever just veer from that. Like, oh, I mean, it was a close friend. I wouldn't do that to someone. Oh, just some random stranger. No. Oh my God, Tim. I was like, <laughs> just some like person who just randomly is like, you know, what? I thought of you and I bought this figure for you. I just really felt like it would mean something to you. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, I didn't think you thought so yeah. low of me. <laughs> 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 that would be so mean. <laughs> like, did I do something to right. you? Like, are you are you upset with me right now? <laughs> They're like running away, crying, and Tim's like, you know, you forgot honestly, something. Yeah, you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. <laughs> the game bell has arrived. <laughs> I know. I'm excited Ew, for this. What's going to happen? I mean, you'll probably be playing with me. <laughs> Some League of Legends next Just a week. little side screen of me playing Animal Crossing while you're playing <laughs> Um Tem says, could be a foot model. I love like, not always knowing the reference, because I feel like we were talking about so many things right now. But you could be a foot model, just so you know. I mean, I, I do have very, uh, what would you even call these? Bony kind of but they're not male looking feet do you guys know that wolf spain when he drew mm. that wolf spain drawing it was one oh, of the yeah. october ones he used his feet as a reference for that so if you what? Wanted, like, no little... i did not not for yeah. that one yeah you used your own feet no i did not. yes tim i took that picture of your feet i that specifically a... drew my foot before but no, i don't have that pose you did with your feet like that that was your reference for your feet oh you know what maybe it was yeah yeah, actually it was. You're right, you're yeah. right, you're right, you're right. But I have very slender, slim feet. I don't have, like, hobbit feet. Um. <clears throat> okay, really quick, I'm going to jump in. Uh, so I'm going to erase some of this rock because I don't like how symmetrical it looks on the bottom. I kind of like when I do one of these bird drawings, them to have somewhat of a a flair to them. Because if it looked too symmetrical, it might look weird on the label. Where I've always found asymmetry works best in terms of creating like a graphic image. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now what I'm gonna start doing, and it, I'll probably only do about 10 minutes worth of this and then we'll end the stream. But I'm going to go around and start doing some heavy detailing, so like really rendering, cutting corners. I'm going to be using the point two. So that's to make this look as pretty as I can in the last 10 minutes here. And I might do a little bit even off stream, but for the most part, this is the level that I'm taking it to. 
So I hope you guys kind of had fun with this bird as well. And if you want to start posting in the Discord your results, or even if you work on it a little more after the stream and want to post it later, that's totally fine too. But I wanted to share some of your uh, drawings on the stream, so we'll do a quick like five minute, we'll pull up some of what people have drawn and then just go through them. <laughs> the what comment was in reference to the bird's feet. Um, oh. Because <laughs> this, this bird could be a foot model with those feet. Oh, that, absolutely. That kind of turned into a foot convo though. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> The last type of combo I want to have with someone. <laughs> Simon says, I'm so down to visit you guys sometime and cut your hair. Absolutely. I could use a formal haircut. Uh, Kendra says, I agree about the sweaters. It is out of place. Ugh, not a fan. Um, Bartex says, I had two surgeries in my life, and one was like five minutes, no sleeping, just like, okay, then come here. <laughs> I was cutting out some kind of growth on the chest. And doctor was whistling like a butcher. Oh, that's terrifying. So oh my you're gosh. While they're like cutting you apart. Oof. That's a nightmare. Yeah, that's... Are you okay? <laughs> that sounds horrible. I mean, I know when I did my uh, wisdom teeth, they had the option of going fully under, which I would have done, but I didn't realize how expensive it was. So instead, I did the laughing gas. You better believe I was inhaling the hell out of it before... When like the doctors left, and was like, oh, just, you know, breathe. <laughs> I was literally like... <laughs> <laughs> Like the biggest press I possibly could because I hate uh, feeling the pain or being awake during it, but it actually was a pretty pleasant experience, <laughs> I have to admit. I feel like the second time you came out more loopy than the first time, so you definitely like had more experience with that laughing gas by the second oh, yeah. time. Yeah. Well, because I learned they leave you alone for five minutes, and the first time I didn't know what to do. And then once I realized, okay, if you breathe this in really heavily, you'll get more of like a high or more like you won't feel it as much. You, you better believe I was really inhaling it. And they sent the gas mask. Do you know this? They have three flavors now, at least at the dentist I went to. They have wild berry, orange, and bubble gum. So the first time I did orange, which is pretty great, but the second time I did bubble gum, mm. a little gross, but amazing, because once you're kind of out of it, the only thing you can taste is bubble gum. And you're just like inhaling bubble gum the entire time without having to chew it. And I was so out of it, I couldn't feel anything. <laughs> it was pretty great <laughs> I mean laughing gas is pretty good I mean you have to be careful though because apparently that's also something that people can get addicted to I, I could out. see that well yeah because you get kind of a euphoric the world gets kind of fuzzy mm -hmm. um, which I know people like that oh Kandor has some progress pics oh the feet look great I almost want to zoom in on those Oh, yeah. Oh, look at you go, Kandor. Yeah, I'll definitely show yours off then when we do the Oh, Carissa the switch. has one in two. Ooh. Oh, oh, I like the little header. Ooh. Birds oh, with two like that. That's cute. Oh, oh that's those cute. look great, too. I like how you went in and redid some of the values. That looks great. <laughs> So I should also mention that since this is for a client, the bird that I'm doing this for, oftentimes if I bring it into Photoshop after, I may lighten some of the areas with a, a white uh, brush and just kind of dot. So like the highlight on the eye, normally I would be okay with leaving it like this, but since this beer label company wants it to be more contrasty, I'll probably up the contrast in Photoshop and then go in with a white uh, pencil brush and just push some of those lighter values. And obviously, I try to keep things as traditional as possible, but for client work, sometimes they want, you know, a little more, and sometimes with traditional, it'd be really tough. I could, uh, Babs actually does this. She goes in with a white paint brush, and she'll literally go in and dab the highlights with white paint. So if that, I mean, that's something I'll probably start doing, but I got to get more familiar with working with um, acrylics. But just know, sometimes I do do that uh, to help push some of the values. <laughs> Eric Zivis says, I have bloody freckles on my feet and I can't imagine why. <laughs> well, the first time I read that, I read it as like actual bloody freckles and I'm like, oh, that might not be a good thing. 
Well, that's cute. Um, Albert Tech says I'm kind of embarrassed of my drawing. No. The, okay, so I, I talk to a lot of artists where they're embarrassed of what they work with or they feel like they're not good enough, blah, blah, blah. Any attempt at drawing or working at getting better is a success because you're learning from it. And if you don't like how it looks, that means you're training your eye to critically analyze what you did and what you don't like and then how to improve upon it on the next one. I, I always say this, the only way you can actually fail is to not uh, do it, to not try. So don't be embarrassed to show what you got. You can even show it and then point out what you think could be better. And uh, I promise I will never make someone feel crappy for attempting to draw, especially in a draw with me type scenario. The only way he'll make you feel crappy is if you give him a pop figure. If you make me, yeah, if you give me a pop figure, I might tell you that I don't like it, but <laughs> I won't, you know, destroy your love of drawing. Absolutely not. What? Oh, that's cool. Kander says, in Germany, necessary surgeries are paid for by your health insurance. We never use the laughing gas. So you just get <gasps> plum knocked out? Or do you have to just grin and bear it? That Kander would literally says, be my nightmare scenario. Plus, I had to take the full anesthesia because the surgery was a few hours long. So yeah, at least oh, you got okay. it. I mean, that's my preferred way of having to get a surgery. Oh, um, for sure. Yeah, I'd rather be is, knocked out. Because I heard them rip out my teeth because, oh gosh. I heard them rip on teeth because I just had local anesthesia on the wisdom teeth. It was very fun. <laughs> it's almost horrible. Well, that's even with laughing gas. You can hear everything still. So when they do the drilling and you know when they like, crack it, because at least with my tooth, they had to go in and literally like do a punch, hammer punch, where it, like you Ooh. hear it. So, but on laughing gas, I think you're so out of it, you just justify the sound. Like, oh, this isn't that bad. But then coming out of it, you're like, oh, that was actually awful. What did I just experience? I admittedly though, I I am okay with shots normally, but shots in my mouth I hate. So like the you know the to numb. So when I get cavities filled, I'll usually have them not give me a shot, and I'll just bear through <gasps> it. I'd what? rather bear through it than get a shot. Yeah, I've done that with cavities what? multiple times now, where you don't get a shot for it. You're nuts. Why? How do you not mind getting shots in the it's arm? It's not as bad as people think, though. Honestly, because I've done it. It's just like quick little like sh mm -mm. sheer parts of pain when they hit like a nerve or something, but otherwise it's not that bad. No way. Um, Simon says, I got too lost in trying to draw here to draw a bird, but I've been listening. <laughs> yeah, well, you post your hair drawing then. Let's see what you're working on, Simon. Let's see it. <laughs> we have another Tim, Tim advice. Candor says it's okay. <laughs> um, Tim, we all cheat. And then um, Kendra says, Von Art, how to get highlights? Make some highlights. <laughs> <laughs> Advice with Tim. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> Femme and Kendra are going to be making a Von Advice book. <laughs> I would love to read that. I could use some advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And just so everyone, I, Kiri Sada and here is Carissa on the Discord, I believe, correct? Um, just so everyone knows that connection. And then Carrie says, how about someone who likes to draw pop figures? There there are some artists that will only draw one type of thing. There's one artist that I see at conventions where they only draw Stitch from Lilo and Stitch dressed up as other characters. Or there's another artist that only draws Mount Rushmore, but the four heads will be right. themed in something different. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a pop figure artist out there. You know what? I think I brought I brought a friend to a convention, and she actually bought one of the Mount Rushmore ones. Really? Yeah. So clearly, some people I think people like that. Oh, I'm there's like, for sure a market for. I it. think iconic drawing stones are fun for people. Well, like people ironic, people iconic, like ironic. consistency. They like knowing what they're getting, and if they have a if they have like a plethora of these themes, there's usually one that they'll relate to. You oh know? yeah. Okay, I think I'm going to end it here, and then we'll share some of what you guys are doing on the stream. So we'll go ahead. So there's my little Ren bird. Like I said, I still might do some fine edits with the point two, but nothing that really needs to be seen on the stream. 
and hopefully that helped break down a simple process on how to do a study from breaking it down in shapes, doing a light value pass, and then cutting edging, and then doing the detail render. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to switch so you guys can see the Cintiq. I need to have is Discord open over here. Yes. Yep. I know it's a little hard to see. You know what? I'm going to turn this off. Oh, that did not help that much. <laughs> Let's keep it off then. All right. I'm going to switch to the i or the Cintiq so you guys can see. Oh, it is turned. Hold on. Rotate counterclockwise. Okay. So, so how to make highlights, add white. <laughs> <laughs> so here is, here I'll make sure I say the right ones. This is Candor. Or no, I, I don't think that was the updated one. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. So here's Candor's. I, I love how you're pushing the lights and darks because obviously there's a big contrast on the foot, the eye, and the tip of the wing. So those are three definitely focal points. And since it's a triangle, your eye is rotating between the three. So these are like simple composition tricks to help the viewer have more fun looking at your piece. And I like that you were you uh, worked with blue. It makes me think of Sean. <laughs> this, you know, I should, Carissa's, this was Carissa's. And this one, I thought it had too much blendy or blending areas, but then the way that you did the texture on top of it really worked out in the end. So that looks great. And I like, he does look angry. That is an angry looking bird. But the wren does look kind of angry. <laughs> this is, what was that, socks for her, the supervisor? <laughs> oh, this is gorgeous. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, you work in a similar way that I work, where it's a very light pass and like build up of the value slowly. So this is great. <laughs> I think you did a great job on that. And then keep pushing that toward the rock area. This is. Simon, oh, yeah, Simon, the working ah, on the hair. <laughs> I can see you have the Jinx reference <laughs> by Katie DeSousa. My favorite League of Legend art illustration was the Jinx one. <laughs> but keep working on the hair. The, my easiest advice with hair is just work it like a shape, and then look at reference for marble statues of hair, and that creates a more illustrative looking hair pattern. I think working with graphite alone, sometimes drawing hair can look messy. So I always try to break it in shapes. So I think looking at marble statues of people that did hair, everything looks very shapular, but it also very much looks like hair. It's like a trick that marble artists did. So good job, good job. <laughs> then here's Eunuch. Oh, this looks great too. Look at you guys. Next is hopefully, uh, what does that say? Does that say shine draw along? A stone draw along? I think a it's stone? a stone. But I do plan on doing a draw along stream yeah. once a week. So, I mean, next week we'll probably have to have one either on Saturday or we'll have to figure out when because we're doing the Wednesday one doing the plants. Or maybe next Wednesday will be the scheduled draw along just so that every Wednesday is always a draw along. Maybe and then do the plants do the plant on, one on Tuesday and... maybe. Yeah. We'll figure it out. I'll post on Sunday what Weather the schedule looks like. <laughs> if it doesn't rain. <laughs> uh, this is from Hungry Panda. One, two, three. Oh, and you said, shape is not the most accurate, but it's my first time drawing birds. It was fun rendering. Hey, if this is your first time drawing a bird. This is great. So this is what I was mentioning, though, with uh, the lines on the feet. Mm. I would try not to shape them out too much and have it be more subtle. That way uh, it doesn't look as crisp. Because the way that you rendered the feathers is great. And even parts of the rock, I would say, too, it uh, it's a little too heavy. But I, I appreciate you for following along. Especially if this is your first bird. This is a really good first bird for this being the first subject matter. I love the, this the, um, the stone part, too, in the bottom there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say, though, the shadows are a little... I mean, from a distance, you got the shadows right. But I would work on the details because if you blur your eyes, like look at, okay, actually I'll, I'll teach you something too. Yeah. Right now. Okay, so look at the image of the reference of the bird. Squint your eyes and look at only the values. Yeah. And then look at theirs. You see how there's too much dark oh, in the center area? Yeah. 
And that's like the easiest way to look at values and simplify things. Hmm. So I think your the lines in the middle of the rock are just a little too dark. But I like that you're you're capturing them, but just a little too dark. Uh, this one's from Burtickman. Burtickman. Uh, oh, this is the cutest one so far. Mm -hmm. I feel like you made the rent look endearing, where all of ours are looking angry and fierce. Oh, this this is great. I have it. I know I have it sideways right now, but. So my advice for you uh, would be, I like how you're doing the soft value pass underneath. I think the trick for you now would be either using your eraser tool. If you have a mono zero, take that eraser and then let me show you on the screen really quick. So on yours, you have a pretty consistent value throughout the bird on the back take your mono eraser and literally etch in lines and that'll break up some of the monotone look of the value and it'll give you some more texture look as well. So a really easy trick to do that, let me see the... So even with the back part of the bird, you can see how on yours it has underneath of the lines, it looks like a very flat looking uh, value, a very light one. And literally all you would have to do is just break it up with either doing an eraser to add more lighter values or take your pencil and add in some darker lines on top. It's a really, really easy way and simple way to break up uh, something looking too flat. But really good job. Created the first happy bird. <laughs> and then last one we got Ella. Oh, this is a great shape. Wait, what did you say? So my, my very, very early sketch. sketch. Just join in now. So Ella is one of our wonderful mods for our Discord Hi. community. This shape is mm. fantastic, Ella. Great job. This is a good example of you have a fantastic foundation to then build up upon. And I always, I know I'll keep repeating through all these fall along streams, you want to have the best foundation first to build upon your structure. Because if you have a weak foundation, the, everything else will collapse and fall apart. So great job. <laughs> Oh, nope, there's one more. <gasps> more birdies. Eric says, or wait, what did they say? Oh, no, they just posted. So this, I think it will stay up oh, there here. We there we go. Aww. Oh, this one looks kind of sad. You created <laughs> the sad wren. <laughs> uh, so this one, I would say the proportions are pretty good. I want to see more on the rock. I think my challenge for you is now adding more value where everything's so light, which is good, good foundation, but then darken up some of those areas. So I would take a darker lead pencil or or even, I mean, even if it's not mechanical, you could take a traditional one and just start edging out some of those darker areas and then punching them out so that the eye really captures the contrast where that eye is. Same with some of the bottom of the tail and uh, in the tail feather is a bit of the black too. So if you just punch out those values, I think this would enhance it even more. So good job. You guys You guys have a lot of good foundations. I try to choose a bird that I think a lot of us could create good foundations off of because sometimes with birds, they're so complex, especially when they open their wings and doing the wingspan. So I wanted this less to be an, an anatomy tutorial and more of a rendering and capturing the shape. And you guys did a great job with that. Mm, so yeah. Everything was so great. Yeah, thanks for sharing everything that you guys were working on on Discord too. Yeah, this was fantastic. Yeah. I, I definitely want to do more of these. If you have suggestions and you want to see Josh and I do a follow-along stream on a specific subject matter, let us know. I think the next one might be plants. I would love to do one on drawing leaves and to show how to draw leaves quickly, especially if you're going to be doing a garden scene or something where you're going to want a lot of them. I think we put too much emphasis on little details, and I'll show you how to simplify them, but still make them look good. So I think that will be what our next follow-along stream is. Okay, uh, could you drop all the emojis one more time? Oh, yeah, so do a little emoji. Thank you guys for coming to this follow-along stream. Even if this is on YouTube right now and you're watching, you can still find and post what you did on the Discord below. We have the emoji contest going on, and I should be streaming tomorrow. I believe at the same time, I have to double check. No, I'm pretty sure it's at 2. And I'm going to be doing my 300k giveaway drawing, so if you want to come join, hang out, and draw something crazy, I'll be drawing tomorrow. And we'll post the schedule for next week, either Sunday night or Monday morning. Most likely Sunday night. <laughs> and yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. Any last words, Schwa? Um, everyone have a wonderful weekend.
and be safe and love you all. <laughs> I don't know. That was good. Yeah, yeah that was great. That was a good. Vibe. And then yeah, and then sometime next week we will do the planting stream, which will put all the plants in that greenhouse. And yeah. Oh yeah, that's all I got. Thank you so much for coming, everyone. And till next time, maybe tomorrow. Take care. Bye 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 bye. Bye bye everyone. Bye bye bye.